Hello everyone, welcome back to Style Esports Season 9. My name is Shinkari and here we are on the main channel. If you're joining us for the first time, hello everyone. My name is Shinkari and I'm joined by Rare Adam. And today we have the Glue Eaters versus Mythic Esports. Glue Eaters is on the red side. Mythic Esports is on the blue. We're in game one of a best of three between these two teams. Ready to get it underway. Take a look at the champions down the list. Ted Adure is on Tom Kench. Mac Grobe is on Viego. MTC Chihuahua is on Vex. MTC Kaz is on Misfortune. And Papapus is on Seraphine. It's on the red side. Arthur Dent is on Gragas. Janice Husband. Janna's Husband is on Jarvan. Happy Dream is on Zed. Vizzy is on Jin. And Bondi is on Leona. I'm here with Rare Adam, and we're ready to get this game underway. Yeah, we started out draft on my channel because, you know, got to do the self-promo XD um, as... Oh, Jenna's husband disconnects briefly there, actually gets back into it really quickly. Almost died to red buff because of it, but uh, regardless, uh, yes, we did go through draft. The Vex was picked rather late into the draft, but so was this Zed. And interestingly enough, teleport on Zed? Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, a lot of folks opt for, uh, opt for um, Ignite here, but I feel like this tells me that they're looking to roam a whole lot more with this mid laner instead of like looking to kill the Vex 1v1 mid. I, I think the other thing is that if they're they're saying if this game goes late, which is good for the uh, the Jin and sometimes the Gragas, that that they're gonna want this this Zed to split push, which Zed is actually pretty good to split pushing in the late game. Zed is gonna be really strong in that side lane if they get fed enough. A big thing to keep in mind is the Dorn shield start as well in this Zed, so realistically just playing this lane as safe as possible potentially scared of what this vex holds we talked about it in draft a little bit that vex is still a champion that can be relatively unknown to a lot of these players so obviously a lot of respect yet being given over by happy dream and i wonder how much happy dream is just doing the trendomir build of let me get as much healing and and health regeneration as i possibly can in myth in runes and masteries and then starting a Doran shield and then just outlasting the mana bar of whatever mage I'm up against. Yeah, I think it's important to keep in mind that Zed is going to have the general resource advantage because it is an uh, they are an energy champion, whereas Vex needs to be a little bit more mindful. But obviously thus far has been doing pretty fine in this lane, uh, staying relatively high up on that mana. And honestly, they've just been going blow for blow in terms of CS, not really going for any high trading patterns. Yeah, and 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 I expect even though there's a Zed there, that they're that 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 uh, excuse me that lane is going to be particularly quiet, um, especially with no uh, ignite. We'll probably see some fighting as the as the levels keep getting higher. Right, they're getting real close to level six, and I think I don't think any Zed in existence can ignore the fact that they're level six and have the ability to burst down their enemy the enemy laner, especially when they have no armor. And while it will be a little bit harder with that Dorn shield. You know, they're going to be able to survive an extra tower shot, maybe? Who knows? But thus far, pretty tame affair overall. No real major power points quite yet. No summoners really burned apart from that teleport on the top side. So uh, keeping it rather low-key for the time being is Happy Dream. Taking a little bit more damage off of the range. Yeah, it, it's looking, it's it's looking once again, pretty quiet here as well. The, the, the most action we saw was Jenna's husband trying to gank in the bot lane, but getting spotted out by that tribe. A tri brush ward and okay, Diego coming into the top lane, getting spotted out by a pink ward in the river brush here. But Jonas' husband is here to uh respond. Diego's backing away and they're going back. They're both the junglers are resetting now. So we thought we were going to be able to wake up maybe five minutes into this game, but you know what? Everyone's still taking a nap, everyone's still vex just embodied right now. Vex is sleeping <laughs> in the mid lane, she's down a little bit of CS, but. Uh, I think the most action we actually saw was when Jenna's husband disconnected, but might get a little bit of a trade up on the top side. Yeah, Arthur Dent is in some trouble here. That's a whole lot of damage. Gets the stun off as well. Arthur Dent is now below half HP. This is why a lot of people ban Tom Kench. The opponent can play Tom Kench. You just don't want them to play it. <laughs> like, you just like, please stop. Like, whatever you're doing, I don't like it. Or as Vex would say, huh. <laughs> to make uh, uh, when she uses her W. <laughs> God, Vex, Vex is the most relatable League of Legends champion. 
I don't think there's a, uh, another League of Legends champion that's more relatable. I mean, I remember I made a tweet about it saying Vex is quite literally the embodiment of League players 90% of the time where they're just sad and depressed or whatever. But um, regardless, that might be uh, a little bit of an overgeneralization. But she's definitely not making Zed very happy with this lane thus far. Oh, yeah. I mean, Zed is having a real tough time even finding some trades here. But, you know, if you start Doran Shield and then are sad because you can't trade with the enemy, it's going to be real tough as... John's husband spotted out by Matt Grobe here. He's down about seven CS, so I'm wondering what um what uh camps he missed. I wonder what camps he missed in order to be down seven CS at this point. But I don't think you're bent out of shape if you're if you're Ooh. driving right now. Is in the top lane, Arthur Dent. That's an explosive cast, knocking Tata Dure underneath the turret here. Has to use Flash to get away, but his, his HP is insanely low. Arthur Dent is not gonna get him to pop that thick skin shield. So he is going to back away and heal up just some of the damage. And that's a little bit of the power of Gragas top lane. While it isn't seen as often now, you still have the potential to knock your opponent under tower. And Tom Kench hasn't backed yet, doesn't really have a lot of that health built up. So it does take a decent chunk. And even in that mid lane there, we saw Happy Dream able to back, get the serrated Dirk and teleport back to lane. Ends up getting a rather favorable trade against Chihuahua. And now with the wave in front of his tower, should be able to extend a little bit of a CS lead. Yeah, and, and and that's basically what I think uh, Happy Dream is looking for here. He has picked up the Serrated Dirk, like you said, and then, oh wait, meanwhile on the bot lane, Bondi diving in a pop -up here, taking a bit of response as he tried to get out. Maybe he wasn't looking for that engage as a whole. Busy is quite low on mana and looking to back here, sitting on about 2,000 gold at this point. Real nice first first back here for uh, for the gen. And I'm expecting Bondi to be roaming towards this mid lane to help Happy Dream with the kill here, but it looks like they're not going to be able to do that because they're diving right here. Happy Dream has already thrown out the death mark. It's about to pop. It's taking them pretty low, but first blood is going over to Vex, or to Zed, rather, is now in the top lane. Mac Grobe is going to cut off Arthur Dent from trying to get away. The body slam lands, but it's going to knock them away. He doesn't have that ultimate available. Here comes Jana's husband. They're trying to get away, but it's not going to happen this time. Now, now Mac Grobe has become Gragas. James, Jana's husband is underneath their own Cataclysm and they're going to go down. Teta Dure is going to be able to pick up the kill as now they're going to this will voyage away. Now they're looking for that last bit of damage and Matt Grobe is trying to get untargetable and get away, but he's not going to be able to do it this time. Matt Grobe goes down, so it's one for two in the top lane. Happy Dream and Bondi are not going to push into this turret. A uh, lot of action coming out in the last 30 seconds there, despite a little bit of a chill early game. All the ultimates come out and you can see how well they're used by... Jana's husband getting a little bit caught out there. Uh, Might have gone in a little bit too early, but Happy Dream and Bondi are able to reply, able to pick up that kill onto the Viego, but Vex goes down well before that play happens. So unfortunately, no mid lane presence to come through and ended up going relatively even despite it being effectively a 2v4 overall. Yeah, a real nice start here, especially for the Viego. Once again, I, I think that they've... that uh. I mean, I think Esport have drafted a lot of snowballers here between the Viego and the Misfortune here, who, if they get ahead, can be very, very potent and very, and even in some cases, hard to stop. So with Mac Grobe here getting that kill early and also having a CS lead over the Jarvan here, this is a real, real good start for the Viego. Yeah, Viego going to be building towards that Divine Sunderer. So despite the real push to get Viego more of a, AD focus as opposed to building tank here, it will still be that sort of tank busting item there. You know, on the flip side, they do have a lot of health stackers that are going to come through. Gragas likes to build a decent amount of bonus health. Leona going to build some health as well, and so is Jarvan. So, not the worst purchase, but it's it's the safe build, I dare say. Yeah. It, it, I think it's pretty safe as well. I think the enemy team does have a decent chunk of tanks on them, and Gragas also gives himself bonus bonus HP with his passive as well. So, and, and plus, it's just so easy to just throw out, throw out like one ability here and there with Viego in order to proc that Divine Sunderer as well. So, Divine Sunderer plus uh, plus a uh, excuse me a Sterics could be what what um what Viego is looking for here just to be a little bit more tanky of a frontliner. But Bondi in the Zenith Blade and the Solar Flare. Holy moly! Chihuahua's HP bar was there, and then it was gone. Holy, oh, that's a real good pickup for the Zen in the mid lane. Yeah, really well played coming out from uh, Happy Dream once again, sort of taking advantage of 
maybe Chihuahua not being as familiar on Vex as maybe they would uh, be on another champion. So this Zed just able to punish that matchup despite us saying it might be a little bit challenging. It is working out thus far. Yeah, for sure. Is I'm really, honestly, I'm really excited that Bondi was able to get this uh, this support pick here from the Leona. You know, like I said, I, I, I took a look at Bondi's match history and it didn't seem like they have a whole lot of practice playing support outside of the games of Leona that they've been playing somewhat recently. So just having, just knowing the game sense of, of being, of having to roam across the map after your first back and, you know, actually playing Leona very well and, even using Leona's passive to help Jin push the wave is also like a, a little thing that actually that like not a lot of supports do. So really hats off to Bondi here for sure. Yeah, so on the main thing is that on Leona, it's not very difficult to play the champion overall. Like she just kind of goes in and does her damage. But uh, Bondi doing a good job thus far. Went for the mobility boots, which I like to see. But top side. Yeah, that's Teta Dure go and, and Macrobe going in here. Actually, Macrobe had to use the ultimate in order to get away there. So not going to be able to use that offensively for just a little bit. They are able to survive here. So both it looks like both junglers are just going to back away. Uh, it looks like Viego also came up from grabbing that Rift Herald as well. So that's going to be a Rift Herald for Mythic Esport. I think they might look to put it bottom because this turret is nearly gone. Yeah, two plates down already and still another two minutes on Herald before those plates expire. So we'll see where uh, Grub wants to put that. But up on the top side, at least, they're just going blow for blow. Uh, despite it being an AP Gragas, Tom Kench doesn't really care and goes for the plated steel caps anyways. Yeah. I mean, I feel like at this point, like, if you're Tom Kench, even though you're, even though the enemy team has, like, maybe some CC here and there, like, I, I think the only thing that the Merc Treads are going to help you with is is just the Gragas damage. Uh, once you get later into the game, the Plated Steel Caps are going to do a lot more. But right now, we're in some trouble because Jonna's husband has to flag and drag over the wall here. Gets away from Macro, throws out the Challenging Smite. It looks oh. like Happy Dream. Ooh, that's a real good flash to ultimate there. A by Papa Puss goes, you, you, goes back out. Seraphine is about to take a whole mess of damage. They're going to flag and drag back in, make it a one for one. Jonna's husband is the one picking up that kill, whereas MTG, MTC Chihuahua is going to be the one picking up the kill on a Jarvan. So it's a one for one in the mid lane. But ultimately, I think this is a really good pickup for the blue team because now they can go pressure drag. Oh, uh, no, they can't pressure drag if they wanted to. Well, you know what? It's not up. <laughs> yeah, it's not up. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Holy moly. Okay. Chihuahua taking a whole lot of damage from that uh, uh, that uh, electricity proc, but it looks like they're just going to have to back away. Yeah, that electric cube proc plus all that Zed damage was uh, pretty good. Shout outs to Eclipse. Uh. Yeah, shout out to the homies at Riot, putting the, or uh, Eclipse in the game and putting electric in the game, making Zed mains a little bit more happy. But that's yeah. a lot of damage coming down. Uh, Jarvan ends up trading one for one. Flag and dragged a little bit too far. I think that was a case where you want to drag and flag the opposite way of the combo, so you don't get pulled in, but. Bondi. Yeah, Bondi's in some trouble. Surrounded. One, three. One versus three. Matt Grobe is going to be the one picking up Leona this time and turning himself into Leona now. So he has a little bit of annoying engagement if they want to continue pressuring here. Turret plates have fallen, so this this Shelly is not as valuable, but they are definitely going to be able to get the turret. Yeah, a couple seconds too late on the Shelly proc there. I don't think they were going to be able to escort it in in time considering where they were on the map, but... They get first turret, which is still some good gold in favor of Mythic Esport, and they're up a thousand gold at 14 minutes. Yeah, Chihuahua oh. putting a whole lot of damage on a happy dream here. It looks like they used the ultimate, but it didn't quite land. I'm not I'm not certain, but it, but the I'm not certain, but they weren't able to pick up the kill, so they're going to just back away. Happy Dream is going to reset, and it's going to be fine as Jonna's husband. Looking for the gauge. There's the flag and drag. There's oh. the solar flare as well. We have a teleport coming in from Gragas and Zed onto the same target there. Here comes the curtain call. One, two. Bullet time as well comes across. Doesn't get any one. Fourth shot is going to come across in just a moment. But MTC Kaz is the first to pick up a kill Ooh. here as, as Groover becomes Leona here. And now it's a one for nothing. The red team still floating around here as they're going to be. Grobe is going to turn back into Viego. And now it looks like they're just going to shove in this mid wave and maybe back off. But yeah, they're looking for this Cloud Drake. One thing to point out there is that Vex lived with about 30 HP. Great Devour coming through from Tetadur. Or Wait, I just realized it's Tetadur in French, which means Hardhead 2000. And really? Yes. Tetadur means Hardhead. 
or head mm. hard, but of course it's it's backwards because it's French. Oh my goodness! Wait Ooh, okay, wait, never mind. That's that's De Arthur Dent getting a really good interrupt onto Tom Kench here. He's going to be in a whole lot of trouble. Ooh. They're finally able to get that last kill as John's husband nearly died to the catfish. As now, let's see what they're able to do off of that here. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. To do? Yeah, to do. This is this is the like I know Mythic are Quebecois. And mm. with, I, I just sort of figured it out as it came through. I was like, Tete Dur, like what? But it's Tete And it kind of makes sense that they're playing Tom Kench because it's sort of like a tank champion where you just kind of throw mm. your head at the wall and you hope it doesn't break. And that's kind of what's happened thus far this game. Although Tom Kench did go down from a great body so, slam so, from the dent. So then is, is it like Papa Poo in the bot lane there? Papa Poo? Not, what, what is that? Not quite. Papa Poos is like... If if it was Poos as in P-O-U-C-E, it would be th Dad Thumb or Papa Thumb. But Poos in that sense, uh, I don't really know. Some of the words like in French you just never use. Yeah, is that's going to be the ultimate coming down onto Didur. He is. He is going to gobble, gobble up the Zed, put him back underneath third. He's oh, taking so oh. many turret shots this time around, as now he has to run for his life, but he oh. has that full stacks, which means bonus damage and a shutdown for Didur here. Is, man, that's such a really good pickup. You can't fight Tom Kent right now, but look at how much armor he has. Yeah, you have, you know, a decent amount of lethality on the side of the Zed, but... It is nowhere near enough armor shred to get through the Tom Kench. And uh, that tongue increases speed with size. So uh, mm. kind of interesting how that works. And the solar flare came out and the curtain call is coming down as well. But it doesn't look like anyone's going to be falling this time as Arthur Den is going to knock. Oh, man, what a great combo. Chihuahua taking incredibly low here underneath her, trying to dodge around as best they can. One auto attack, two auto attack, throws out the sad face and is going to go down. That is going to be a kill up in the top lane for Arthur Dent on the, to the Vex. It's a pretty good pickup. Yeah, unfortunately, this Vex hasn't been able to get off of the ground. Had the Mythic delayed quite literally by the amount of gold needed to purchase the uh, Seeker's Arm Guard. So hasn't been able to get off the ground quite yet in terms of damage. But at the end of the day, Arthur Dent survived that with a solid 60% HP. I don't even think it was that close. Yeah, it, it was It was really, really good as Bondi is now looking for Tadur here. Yeah, it's going to scare him off of the of the bot side there. But, you know, it's not going to be a while until this Drake spawns and still folks are around this side of the map. And it looks like Viego is the only one making the most proactive play here as he's going to pick up the last Rift Herald of the map here. Yeah, last Rift Herald is going to be going over. It generally doesn't give you as much value unless you get a full turn off of it, which they might. But And now Ted deals in trouble. Yeah, to do us in trouble is that's going to be the ultimate coming down onto him, taking incredibly low. Happy Dream is going to be the one picking out the kill on the, onto cat, onto the catfish this time. You know, you know what? To do is now uh, for the rest of this game an official Louisianan because they are both French and a catfish is now Ooh. Papa Puss is going to be in some trouble here. That's a whole lot of damage coming down from the gin. That's going to be the flag and drag as well. Vizzy is going to be the one picking up the kill on the Seraphine. And now, yeah, that, that yeah, that's my assessment. Yes. They're now officially an, an honorary Louisianan for the rest of this game. Yeah, a, a casual, as they say, but... A casual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Like, this is... I guess this is the part, the shocking part is that, first of all, tomorrow or in two hours, it's Thanksgiving, by the way, as yeah. uh, Sky pointed out. I'm not 100% sure, but I think the Skies are Canadian. I feel like they are. The Skies? Yes. Like Sky Dancer and Sky Ripper? Yes. Okay. Part of part of me feels like at least someone up there in style is Canadian because I've just noticed a lot more Canadian references than usual and a lot of Canadian <laughs> teams here, but we'll get back to that. Yeah, Chihuahua's taking a whole bunch of damage. Arthur Dent doesn't want to go underneath third. Has to actually flash his way. Oh, no, it looked like he flashed away, but it looks like he's just going to get out of there as Matt Grobe is just fighting, clearing out these wards, getting a little bit of vision control around this end of the map gonna pick up this turret as well mythic doing a real good job have the rift herald as well i think they might use it as a distraction sending it mid lane and then going up and grabbing the drake in just a little bit yeah it looks like they're going to try and basically use the shelly pressure like I, as i call it you just toss it in a lane and you leave it there and someone has to go deal with it or it takes a tower while you go take something else on the map but infernal dragons already spawned so it might be a little bit late for them to drop this herald unless they're putting a bot lane but and Grobe isn't in any rush to drop this either. 
Yeah, it looks like they're they're looking for something here. They do have a little bit of vision control on this half of the river here. And Vex is now joining them on this half. And I don't think they had vision on Vex coming through the uh, the tri brush there. So now both ends now no both sides kind of have formed this line of scrimmage here through in the fog of war as well as Arthur Dent waiting on the side here looking for a good initiation. But that's gonna be a root on the grove. And here comes the curtain call. One, two. Three. That's going to be the flag and drag onto the back end here. They're diving up. Look at the HP bars go down as MTC Kaz is going to be able to pick up that, but they're diving onto the misfortune on the backside, forcing her to run away. Vizzy is going to pick up the pick up the next Ooh. kill, but these blue HP bars are still insanely healthy as they continue to fall one by one. That's going to be the double kill for misfortune. Now Tidura is now looking for more. He's going to slow up the Jin. Going to get him stunned up, eat him up, spin him out. That's going to be a hungry, hungry hippo picking up a kill for himself. Is that MTZ Kaz picking up a third kill? They're a rampage. None of Official triple kills. That's a four for one in favor of Mythic Esport. And the only person they really lost is the person who's not worth any gold. Unfortunately, Chihuahua goes down, but a really good bullet time across the team. Just such insane stalling coming out from both the Seraphine as well as the Tom Kenj to buy Misfortune and Viego so much time. And on the back end, Arthur then tried to peel as much as possible, as did Bondi, but they it just wasn't enough to keep the Jin alive, most importantly, and Happy Dream wasn't able to burst out Kaz either, interestingly enough. Yeah, and it, ooh, that's a flag and drag over the wall here. They have a teleport coming in as well. Macrobe is looking for Jana's husband. He's taken incredibly low. They might actually be able to get another charge. That's actually really big, as now that's going to be a huge Abyssal Voyage on a Bondi here who can't flash over the wall. That's going to be Macrobe picking up the kill there, and that's going to be an easy one for zero around this side of the map though that is going to be an inhibitor turret being hit by the shelly though so the damage isn't going to be permanent but it's still a huge chunk of damage onto that turret that if the blue team want to go back later and go and pick it up it's going to be pretty low yeah and by the looks of by the looks of this game glue eaters have just sort of fallen off a little bit they were ahead slightly before that last engage, but they've just been a little bit behind in terms of the macro, but now this is starting to hurt a lot more. They're down 3,000 gold, and Mythic Esport just showing that, yeah, they've been playing together for a while. They know how to play their comp from the by the looks of it, and their macro is on point thus far, and Glue Eaters just look a little bit behind the curve right now. Yeah, it, it's definitely looking a little tough, and, and honestly, like, they had, I, I think they had, like, a pretty good early game, too, like, Happy Dream was bursting out Chihuahua really well, Arthur Dent, house level 6, was able to fight Tedua really, really well, and I think that bot lane was doing pretty well, like, going even, like, I don't think there was a whole lot of fighting in that bot lane, but now... We've reached kind of close to the end of the mid game here as folks are starting to get their their level two and their ultimates here. And it just looks like Mythic is just having a bit of an easier time here with this uh, with this team comp they put together. Yeah, they're, like this misfortune is always going to be up there on the ease of execution scale, as is uh, Vex to an extent. She's not a very complex champion. It's more so just about knowing when to go in and how to use your passive. That's really the only sort of high skill expression, I dare say, because her ultimate, of course, is that uh, kind of follow through. You need to know when to go through. It's sort of Lee Syndrome in that sense, but yeah, overall, it is Lee a, Syndrome. It's a little bit easier <laughs> for the Vex, to, uh, the Vex and the Misfortune to be able to output their damage compared to the Zed and even to the Jin, where you're very skill shot reliant. So I think this is where the team comps start to sort of fall apart, at least for the side of Glue Eaters, but they still have some avenues back in there. Arthur Dent doing rather well on this top side, building towards that cosmic drive, and Zed is still a force to be reckoned with. Two and a half items is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, the Zed definitely does hurt. Does did pick up the Serpent's Fang, which I think is pretty interesting. Definitely good against the uh, definitely good against the Tom Kench, but only after he's popped the uh, the the shield himself. So, ooh, wait a minute, Arthur Kent. Oh my God, that's so much damage. Flag and drag over the wall. Chihuahua's gonna go down to Arthur Dent. Interesting. I didn't even see him hit him that last ability. What killed him? Yeah, the, the main thing about Santa Gragas is it's sort of the old broken skin because the barrel that he drops down is so tiny. Of course, now that they added the indicator, they're all the same, but it is really difficult to see sometimes, and the indicator can be a little bit of a bait. Like, you can see it right there. It's completely hidden within Baron. Like, most of the barrels yeah. you'll see a little bit pop out, and I mean, that's why Santa Gragas used to be the only skin they played in LCS, but... Now, like, since he got reworked, I think that's when the main changes came through. But 
Uh, regardless, yeah. Baron getting started up. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a big Seraphine ultimate coming across. James Hunt Janice Hunter is gonna be the first to go down. That's gonna be the solar flare to interrupt the ultimate. There is now Jin. One, two, three. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the abyssal voice coming across, interrupting that ultimate. There is bounties trying to run for their life, but they're going to fall to Mac Grove here. Now they're trying to continue this onslaught. They have yet to lose a single member, yet they've killed two of the opposing team of the glue eaters. Yeah, you're able to take down a couple of members there, and now their Baron is, or it, this is going to be their Baron. They've got the Misfortune. Uh, they have Chihuahua who does some decent uh, damage to objectives, and it's not really much of a contest. They don't even bother to look at it. They might lose their mid lane tier one here, but overall, I think that the side of Mythic are going to take that trade. They won't even lose their tower, actually. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to lose a whole lot here. And, you know, they have that mid wave shoved in, and. Maybe if we take a look at the HP bar, like maybe if they're really late to this turret, that cannon minion could get it. 75, 26. Actually, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, they're able to get at least something back, but uh, Dragon is now spawning. And this is soul point for the side of Mythic, and they're in perfect position for this. Jin is top lane, so they're not even going to bother. Yeah, it doesn't look like they can fight, or or even if they want to at this point. They've even cont they contested the Baron, they failed, and now they have a Baron buff. It's going to be even harder to fight them 5v5 with that, with that, with with those buffed up stats for just a little bit longer. And now they have the, the the second Infernal Drake. This puts them on soul point. So whenever this next five minutes is going to happen, there's either going to be a team fight or just a given Dragon Soul right here. So we'll have to see. A lot of folks... Oh, okay. Abyssal Voice trying to find Arthur Dent. Not going to happen. Yeah, you were talking about timers there. And Infernal Soul is going to spawn 20 seconds before, before Baron, which means that... In that situation, Mythic have all the control over the map they want, but oh, what a cast! Ooh, yeah, it still ends up taunt. It still ends up uh, charming Jana's husband here. Is that's gonna be the flash and the body slam as well? Matt Grobe really flexing their Gragas play a little bit here, as now they're gonna turn back into Viego and start taking down this turret. That's gonna be the curtain call coming across. That's three. That's four. Grobe is taking incredibly low. Gonna dive on a Bundy here, but taking a whole lot of damage in response. That's gonna be Jin finding the shutdown here. His Happy Dream is looking for something in response. That's gonna be Solar Flare, but not gonna do a whole lot. Vizzy is taking incredibly low. His Bondi is trying to get one oh. kill after another. Look at this Vizzy. He just does so much Quadra? damage. He got the Quadra kill. Can he get the Penta to do it? Just has so much <laughs> HP. And this Tom Kench is so big. He does so much damage. He's gonna be the one picking up the kill. They only need one to to, to, to kill the Nexus here. They're spawning in about five seconds, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Tador is going to be running down. The, the honorary Louisianan is going to be the one picking up the kill of the Nexus, the most important 50 gold of the game, and they're going to take game one. Yeah, and I dare say it was meant to be that Jin doesn't get the Penta kill. Jin loves the number four and got the Quadra kill, so that's all he could do. Uh, Tet Dur, though, was able to just finish off that game and just a really well-played game from Mythic in terms of their macro. They, their scores don't jump off the page, although shout out to Tet Dur and Kaz for really carrying the load there in terms of the gold. But at the end of it, it just seemed like Glue Eaters were a little bit lost around the map. Yeah, it, it looks like once the, once the mid game started happening and Mythic started just moving around a little bit more, or, or they, I'm not quite sure when, when it really tipped in their favor, right? They, I, I, they won like a couple of, once the mid game happened, like Mythic was like, okay, I mean, we didn't lose anyone in the, do we lose anyone early game? And then like they point and look around, it's like, I died like one time. It's like, okay, I mean, are we good? Are we good? You all, all want to kill them? It's like, yeah, okay. And then, and then they just, got like one team fight win was on two were had two snowball champions and were then able to snowball the rest of the game yeah they were just able to sort of pile up all of those kills on the members that mattered and from there it just seemed to be a little bit of a snowball effect and as we've mentioned before mythic are a team that have been around style for a while so no surprise that they know exactly how to close out their games in quick order yeah, for sure. But we are going to take just a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be on the rift of game two of Glue Eaters versus Mythic Esports. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this.
Hello everyone, welcome back to Style Esports Season 9. My name is Shinkari and I'm joined by Rare Adam and we're in Game 2 of Glue Eaters versus Mythic Esports. Mythic Esports is on the red side, Glue Eaters is on the blue. And we are pretty deep into picks and bans. We're nearly done with Phase 1 and we're ready to get this game underway. I, as you can see, Yasuo, Set, and Irelia have been banned away by the Glue Eaters and Mythic Esports hovering the gangplank currently have already banned away the Diana and the Silas. Yeah, and once again is going to let Eaters first pick the Misfortune. Yeah, Misfortune going to go over this time to Glue Eaters, not to Mythic. So, you know, Misfortune just apparently the best champion in the game right now. You can just blind pick it into anything and feel pretty happy. And to be fair, Kaz had a very good game on that MF. We're going to see what they have as the answer. And this is what I was looking for. This is the answer we've seen a lot at Worlds. Yeah. Lucian Nami is such a strong combo right now. And with Vitzerk, Subbing back in for Papa Poos, it looks like they're going to switch that strategy just a little bit in the bot lane. Yeah, Nami and Lucian, I think, is insanely powerful, um, particularly myself, because Nami is one of my favorite. It is one of my favorite, I think, is my most played champion. Um, I'd have to double check, but Nami is Nami is one of my favorite champions to play, and she is very, very good with Lucian. With the change to his passive being whenever he gets buffed by something by an ally, uh, he gets a, a a little bit of extra damage, and Nami is one of those enchanter supports that can that I think has the most amount of abilities that target allies. I think the only other one is Lulu, but Lulu has been on the receiving end of a whole bunch of nerfs. So Nami being here, having a whole mess of CC, a whole bunch of things to target Lucian with to give him that passive. Very very strong pick here, but in the bot lane for the for the glue eaters, it's going to be curse of the sad bullet time. Yeah, and this is sort of a throwback at this point because of the Amumu nerfs that came through. I think we talked about it briefly in game one uh, when Draft actually wasn't on this channel. It was on the other one. My channel, by the way, go follow me. Twitch on TV slash It's a shameless self-plug. Uh, but Amumu's Ooh. level one combo, instead of costing 60 mana, it costs 140 mana now. So that's the big downfall for Amumu right now. But uh, Grobe says Viego was not an issue last game, and we're going to make sure it is uh, picked for us again. Or it was an issue last game, and we want to make it an issue again. That's what I was yeah. going to say. So uh, the Hecarim, though, going to come through instead of the Jarvan, and that's a little bit of an interesting adaptation. Hecarim has gotten a little bit more priority recently from what I've seen, and I, a lot of that has to come down to uh, the damage buffs that he's been receiving so that he can pack a little bit more of a punch and can build Trinity Force or Divine Sunder as opposed to before when it was Turbo Chem Tank and he just knocked people around and be a CC bot. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, we're, we're, what we're seeing here is just Hecarim kind of returning to where he was in Season 10 and before, where people were just kind of building him as a bruiser with a Trinity Force, right? Where he had to kind of build these early game damage items and then build into tank later in the game as he started to fall off. But as opposed to early uh, Season 11, where he could just build whatever he wanted and do a Kabillion damage. Now he's just going to have to just rein it in just a little bit. Uh, no pun intended. As uh, now Tom Kench and LeBlanc are going to be banned away by the Eaters. And Akali and Gragas are going to be banned away by Mythic Esport. Yone is going to be picked up by Mythic Esport for uh, Chihuahua in the mid lane. Is Has been known to play the edgy sword brothers in the mid lane. So being able to pick that up, especially after being able to receiving the LeBlanc, uh, Irelia, and the Yasuo ban is pretty good for them. Yeah, and with that, it generally means... Uh, oh, never mind. We're just going to get Vex in the mid lane for yeah. Happy Dream this time. So on the flip side, but uh, does pigeonhole Tet Dur into more of an AP-focused champion? It could just be the something like a tank in the top lane. Won't be the Tom Kench, but there are other AP tanks up there. But uh, apparently, Glue Eaters are saying, you know, we lost to this, and we're just going to pick it instead. But Camille as the blind pick for Arthur Dent, this is definitely a player who can pilot some of those champions to great effect did a good job on the gragas all things considered and now on camille should have his way with a lot of these matchups because there's not a whole lot of ap laners that can deal with camille very well yeah camille is is a pretty strong champion i know a lot of folks were talking about i, th I think kenan was the counter to camille or kenan was the counter to jace i think but yeah there's there i think you're right that there's not a whole lot of counters to the camille in the top lane here but we'll have to see if this rumble can Ooh. do it. Actually, I like this rumble pick up here. It has risen a little bit more in priority in the top lane, especially after some of the jungle nerfs. 
And Rumble in general does a lot of damage in the early stages. That Flame Spitter at level one does like 200 damage over the time. So it's really strong uh, in terms of being able to face that Camille a lot. And Camille generally likes to fight into you. If Rumble can get ahead in that lane, that is the win con because you can chase someone down with your Electro Harpoons. You can deal a whole bunch of damage across the team with that equalizer and especially when you look at some of the backline threats here from glue eaters especially that misfortune she doesn't want to be sitting still around a rumble so that bullet time is going to be so much scarier to use especially when you've got uh, the the steam combo as i like to call it the tidal wave plus the equalizer you might just burn up in the atmosphere if your uh, bullet time coming down <laughs> Yeah, not to mention there's a, there's there's also the oh. culling that can come down in that straight line as well. There's a lot of ultimates that kind of compound together in this straight line for uh, Mythic Esports here. I mean, Fate Sealed is also an ultimate that strikes in a straight line as well that could keep people inside of a um, of a culling or even a uh, an equalizer as well. There's a whole lot of ultimates that synergize real well with each other for Mythic here. And one thing to keep in mind is I'm going to switch over to Champ Select now. I just realized that was grief in that Tetsuo is playing the Yone up in the top lane. And this is another champion that's risen a little bit in priority. Definitely can go toe to toe with Arthur Dent on this Camille in terms of champion design. But what that means is it saves, or saves the Yone from having to lane into that Vex, which as we saw, the Zed is a little bit different because there's blinks instead of dashes, but Yone definitely doesn't want to be dashing right into a Vex and basically giving away a free fear and a free gloom proc. So uh, providing that AP in the mid lane means that Rumble can roam around a little bit more and we might see the Ignite or a more aggressive summoner spell come through. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. I, I, I still think even though she, I, I think Chihuahua is still a person that might still take teleport. Uh, we saw it previously, uh, we saw it in the last game as he was picking Zed, who's like arguably one of the most like aggressive champions that you could be playing, right? And almost always takes Ignite, especially in 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 like games around this plat and diamond area and yeah, teleport. They had a teleport. So I, I, I wouldn't put it past them that they have a teleport, especially now that they're on like such a, a 5v5 team fighter that teleport into a equalizer could be insanely powerful and game changing to whatever team fight they're in. Yeah, and I think that there is a lot of team fight potential coming through from Mythic once again, but Glue Eaters have a lot on their side as well. If you look at the curse of the bullet time or the sad bullet time, I guess we'll say, because it's a little bit sad now considering a Mumu got all those nerfs. It is still Aww. a very strong combo, and Hecarim with that fear can even crowd control people for longer than a Mumu can, so you can get the Hecarim Fear onto multiple members if it's at the edge of the fear, and Camille is able to shut down people in 1v1s or 2v2s in the side lane as well, so I think we've got to keep our eye on how the counter-engage from Glue Eaters comes through, because that is really a focal point for the side of their team to make sure they aren't just dying before they can get their full combos off. Yeah, it, it, it's that's going to be really, really important here. I, I think that Mythic isn't playing as much of a snowball -y comp as they were before. They are still sporting the Viego, but I feel like Lucian isn't going to be awful if played from behind, especially with the Nami there as well. Like, you're going to get a lot of incidental damage from that. So I, I think if if Eaters gets a huge lead here, which... You know, they're they're sporting Hecarim, they're sporting Misfortune. You know, they have some snowbally champs here that if they're able to get ahead, you know, Mythic isn't going to be just like, you know, down the what do they say, down the creek without a paddle? You know, you're you're stuck up a creek yeah, stuck up a creek, no. Stuck up a creek without a paddle or something like that. Yeah, it, it I don't think yeah, they're they're definitely not gonna be, you know, stranded, right? They're still gonna be able to at least fight here and there, um, you know, I, I think they also have a lot of champions that are very good into the Misfortune as well. Like, Nami is traditionally a character that is very good into champions that have channeled ultimates. A uh, very, very long time ago when Jin was the most, was one of the most powerful picks to pick, to pick up, Nami was the, uh, was the support that you picked because you were just able to easily aim the tidal wave in the direction, you, you knew where Jin was. And so you could just aim the tidal wave in that direction and be able to stop the curtain call. Yeah, and I think that, especially with the recent changes to Lucian, as you were saying, Nami's will take Electrocute and they will just 
get the Lucian to go E, and you take your E as well, it procs... Lucian can proc the Nami's Electrocute, which is absolutely bonkers, and Misfortune will suddenly be wondering, where did my health go off of three autos? Press the attack was proc, Electrocute was proc, and I have 200 health now, so we'll keep an eye on that yeah. combo as well. Yeah, for sure, but we are going to take just a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to be on the rift of Game 2 of Glue Eaters versus Mythic Esport. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Hello everyone, welcome back to Style Esports Season 9. My name is Shinkari and I'm joined by Rare Adam and we're on the rift of the Glue Eaters versus Mythic Esports. We're about to get it underway and it looks like Mythic Esports might be smelling a level 1 invade. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to get the good old level 1 5v5. I just forgot to zoom out here and let's see what happens here because uh, neither team knows that the other is there quite yet, but who will be the first to spot it out? Yeah, it looks like Tudor is already making his way into the top lane, and Anther and Ar Anther Arthur Dent is also going to be joining him out there. Antler, <laughs> Antler Dent, Ant Antler Darkness. Antler Dent, <laughs> Antler Darkness, Lilia. Antler Darkness Raven Way. Um, <laughs> We're the preps, the preps swap and walk by him. <laughs> Losing it on the he tonight. sticks their middle finger up at them. <laughs> Junglers are both starting on their red buffs. Interesting to see Hecarim do that because Hecarim runs out of mana pretty quick. Um, not that interesting to see. Uh, oh, that was a, actually an interesting play. But Diego going to start that red buff to try and get some more prio on the bot lane, which I think is a little bit more of a focal point this time around because you have the Lucian Nami on top of the uh, Viego potential early on means that you can definitely put some hurt down on the nerfed mummy as well as misfortune in the early game. Yeah, it's definitely definitely starting to... I, I think it's pretty good to throw attention into the bot lane 
especially when it, when you have a snowballer versus a snowballer in that in that particular uh, case, right? You have Viego versus Misfortune here. You want to if you are the snowballer yourself against another snowballer, obviously you want to shut down the other snowballer and put yourself ahead so that you can continue to snowball, especially in the early game when you have a when you have a Nami who can very easily set up a lot of ganks for you. Yeah, and speaking of which, we were talking about Thanksgiving earlier. You know what usually happens around the end of October in Canada? It snows. So uh, talking about snowballs, we might have snowballs soon. Uh, that's the last I'm going to talk about snowballs for a while. But um, in the mid lane thus far, Vex is getting what seems to be the better of Chihuahua. They're already burned one of those health, or the only health potion that Rumble had and getting a little bit of lane priority in terms of the CS. But top side, Tetu, always looking aggressive. To do really doing a good job up in this top lane. I, I love the Yone pick here. It's it's a little interesting against the Camille, but I think it's just there just because Yone can kind of match the damage that Camille does. And it's a little it's interesting because I feel like more regularly Yone will be able to poke Camille outside of her ranges, right? Then then um then Camille can do the same against Yone. So I'll have to see. This isn't a matchup we haven't seen a whole lot, but with these all-ins here, Tadur definitely is not at an, adva oh. <laughs> an advantage here, especially when Jonna's husband shows up. Look at all this damage here. Taking incredibly low. Guess that shield tries to survive for just a little bit longer, but it goes over to the spawn camping. Arthur Den is going to be first blood given over to the Camille in the top lane. Yeah, Camille just sort of let Jenna's husband do all the work there and then said, hey, I'm Jenna. Let me clean this one up. So uh, at the end of that, uh, Arthur Dent just able to stay safe and no summoners burned except, well, actually the ghost was burned. So there's one summoner burned, but Hecarim sort of flexing the muscles early. And that's what you like to see on the horse. You want to see uh, the Hecarim sort of getting off the ground early here. Yeah, once again, Hecarim needs that gold. His build is pretty expensive now. Has to look into Sterix Gauge and, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, Divine Sunderer, maybe some other items as well. I wonder if we'll finally see, after all this time, the, the item that we have missed for so long. You know, the Dead Man's Plate. I mean, Where have you gone? Dead <laughs> I missed you. Dead Man's is such a bad item. <laughs> like, just straight up. It gives you <laughs> 40 movement speed at max stacks and a bonus 40 damage on your first auto attack. And the stats kind of suck alongside it. Like, it's... Oh, my God. I don't know. Like, if you're going to go winged moon plate item... I miss when Shirelia is built out of winged moon plate. That was kind of fun, but... Yeah. I, I think Hecarim is just going to go for maybe a Trinity Force if they're feeling spicy, but most likely a Divine Sunder. And uh, if anything, Yomu's is probably the best movement item in the game right now, even though it's kind yeah. of weird to build. It's just so strong right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I've missed Dead Man's Plate. I think Dead Man's Plate is one of my favorite items in the game, honestly. Yeah. Like, besides Shirelia's Reverie, like, like whenever, oh man, Rammus is another one of my favorite champions, and Dead Man's Plate is, like, really good on him, and so I just move really fast, and it's fun. But, man, you're, you're, just, you're just right. Like, Dead Man's Plate is just so bad <laughs> right so now. Bad. It got nerfed so bad, and then, like, the physical damage that it does on your next auto attack is not great, and it's just upsetting. It's just upsetting. A little bit. Now, Tadur in the top lane, fighting Arthur Dent here, putting him pretty far underneath the turret, and Arthur Dent just doing a whole bunch of damage. Camille doing Camille things is what's happening in the top lane right now is grapple. Okay, going to go over. Knife Grandma doing a whole bunch of damage. So the red team is going to take this opportunity to go and grab that... That dragon on the bot side here. They're going to use the bubble. Get Bondi put up into the air. Here comes Rumble oh, in from the side here. It doesn't have that ultimate, but so much damage. Going to knock him away as well. But now they're trying to get on the Bondi. They're going to be successful. That's going to be the possession. Dives onto Hecarim. Can now become Hecarim if he wants here. But to do trapped underneath the turret here. Still not level six. Cannot use that fate seal. Going to go down as now Matt Grobe looking for Happy Dream. Can't quite find it. We have a teleport coming down from Rumble. Coming back into this mid lane here going to eventually grab the dragon i believe grab two kills in response is as well and pick up a kill for themselves in the top lane with arthur den yeah and overall really good play from mythic on that bot side they give lucian a kill to give diego a kill and those are two champions you don't want to be giving free money over to but in the mid lane despite the kill going into vex's pocket rumble's able to clean up just as much gold with the assists and still has a little bit of a lead with the uh cs at least for now so Overall, not a bad play for Mythic around the bot side, but right now, Tetzio is not having a fun time on top lane. Uh, that's a Sheen and a Hearthbound Axe already on Camille. Yes, Janice's husband probably not having a good time in this bot lane here. Oh my god! Matt Grubb is going to be able to pick up the kill, become the horse himself. Another blue ribbon for Viego, I guess. Yeah, as 
So I, I go to a school, University of Ottawa. Our logo is the GG, which apparently is the first horse out of the gate. This is a really, like, weird tangent, but Hecarim is not the GG this game. It is it is mm. Matt Grobe who's going to be saying GG at the end of this one because this is Viego already 2-0 and 1, 100% kill participation. Yes, it's early to say that, but Viego is not a champion you want to be giving a lot of kills over to in the early game because he scales relatively well into the later stages and if you can just start getting reset after reset that champion is devastatingly hard to kill yeah it's it's one of the reasons why he got like he was on the receiving ends of nerfs like pretty early on i think in the second patch they did this to viego that like after viego was released they nerfed him in the next patch and then they did a second round of nerfs in the patch afterwards and that was reducing the amount of healing he got after he got a possession because while he's possessing someone, like, as he's going through the process, like, that channel, once the channel is, like, halfway through, he becomes untargetable, and then he becomes the champion here. So it's it's just really, really powerful for him to just, like, pop the passive, take over someone, heal up a lot, and then go in and fight. But looks like the only person who needs healing now is Tadur, as he's once again forced underneath turret by the Camille. And this is the issue with Yone top lane. Sometimes it's very difficult to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in these melee matchups. Oof. It's weird that Yasuo and Yone like some ranged matchups just because they're squishier champions, but Arthur Dent is not taking any prisoners up on this top side. But Grobe might have something to say about this as Dent doesn't have that hookshot for another couple seconds. Yeah, he's got the fate sealed, though. That's a whole lot of CC coming down, looking oh. for the last bit of damage they need. They're going to be able to turn it to a one-for-one, one, but now it's Matt Grobe, who's Camille. Look at this damage that they're doing. Going to use the Viego ultimate, going to take it according to the Leo. Can they land the stun? That's an absolute oh. no. Use the ultimate again, trying to find a Janus husband. Can't quite find it. Matt Grobe is going to get a one-for-one one in this top lane, but not going to be able to get the kill on the Janus husband. And I think the one way they potentially clean that up is if Grobe uses the last part of that precision protocol to try and kick the Hecarim as they're running away. Then you use the ultimate to follow through. But, uh, you know, it's it's really difficult to say exactly how to play that out. It was well played from Jenna's husband to dodge away from what could have been a two for one for Grobe. Or, but as well, Camille being three and one is not a good look against Tetsu. This Yone is already pretty far behind. No crit chance yet. Only the Vamp Scepter. And Camille's almost completed on her Trinity Force. Yeah, and once once that Trinity Force is built, it's going to be real hard for Yone to fight. It, it's just... It, it, it's already really hard. It's just going to get that much harder. Um, it's still... Yeah, once again, it's just really, really tough as Viego. Onto this Rift Herald up in the top lane. Not a whole lot of response because Hecarim has just reset... And there's not a whole lot of Pryo or a lot of roaming around by this Vex. I don't want to say, like, we've been seeing a whole lot of action in the top lane. I don't think the direct -to camera has gone mid once. I think we saw it around the Dragon and, like, level 2, but mid lane's been sort of a Vex lane right now. They're just sort of sleeping, farming away. Pretty sure Rumble's just being a real, like, annoyance to Vex, if anything, cause, <laughs> and laughing about how, yeah. how on fire he is and saying... Yeah. Warning that sounds like something else, but uh, Vex is just sort of bedge right now and just wants to farm up. But here's here's a very interesting tidbit to point out. VC bought a cull and it has 90 stacks in it, which means that they bought the cull and they had 89 or 87 CS. Yes. What in tarnation? Yeah, I guess they're just really looking to... I don't, I don't know. It, 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 I agree that it is pretty late for a call at this point. Like, 11 minutes in is, okay, to do her putting out some damage, but not going to be able to really want to do a fight more than that. But real tough to get some decent damage onto Camille oh. here. That's an equalizer coming down onto the enemy team, but it is a 1v4 right oh. now. Your calling's coming across, and there's the tidal wave as well. Kaz is looking for something here, but that's going to be the curse of this set. Bullet time oh. coming across. The last bit of damage they need. Happy Dream is going to be able to pick up one. Can they find another? The ultimate comes across, but it's not going to land the reset. They're going to be able to get one kill for one, and now they're back on the Drake with some pretty healthy health bars here. It look like the red team can fight them. Is in the top lane. Arthur Den is looking for more. Tadur is taking incredibly low. Camille doing a real good job. Is now Chihuahua trying to find him, but VZ just so healthy and does so much damage. It's a real good bubble. Oh. They might be able to turn it around. Kaz actually gets a good turnaround kill. Now they're going into the pit here. Jonas' husband needs to get out of there. He's insanely low. Uses the, un the unstoppable, the shadows onslaught there, trying to find that oh. last kill. Happy Dream put into a bubble. Nami gets shot down. Holy moly! Rumble's gonna be able to get the dragon. That's huge. Fate seal coming oh. across, but is pulled back in because. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs>
I, Ted Dill just got his. He just got choked out. He just got fully yeah. yanked back in there. <laughs> that was. <laughs> you saw his champion model outside of it, and Camille's like, nope. But a really <laughs> yeah. well played from Kaz. And actually, huge shout out to Vitz Eric there because those bubbles were on point. You talk about taking no prisoners, but Nami was taking everyone into the Aqua prison. Call up Jason Momoa because uh, Nami definitely needs a king after that one. Ooh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's going to be a bit. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I was going to get. <laughs> We're going to. I'll tell you after the stream. Uh... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's it was a really good team fight for sure that Nami was playing out of her mind. Uh, Vitzerk was playing very, very well in those. That bubble bait was really, really good by Chihuahua as well. Like baiting them closer to be in range of the Nami bubble was really, really good. And able to turn it around, and you know the the onslaught of shadows came across trying to get that last bit of damage, but it still wasn't good enough. So, real good pickup for Mythic Esport here, and that puts him that puts him to second Drake here, which now means for the rest of the game, Glue Eaters might just have to prioritize this dragon, even though they might not want to. It's it's at a stage right now where. You know, this Lucian even right now, 3-0 and 3, this bot lane is so far ahead. It's just really Arthur Dent against the world, and oh my goodness. Never mind. Ha yeah, Happy Dream coming in here, getting a whole lot of damage on the Kaz, might not. Ooh, actually goes down at the last a bit there. So they're going to be able to get a reset as Arthur Dent is going to go down to Dedur in the top lane's Bondi. He throws down the curse of the Sat Mummy, taking incredibly low here. Happy Dream doesn't really have that reset just yet, but throwing a whole lot of damage onto the Sad Mummy here. So they're going to be able to get away. It's a one for one across the map. And they should trade shutdowns. They trade the Camille shutdown for the Lucian shutdown. Vitzerk is able to keep the shutdown on themselves, so no extra gold given over. But I think this play favors the side of Mythic just a little bit because now Jenna's husband forced to play incredibly safe on the opposite side of the map, and Happy Dream has nothing to deal with Chihuahua here. Yeah, Chihuahua's in a real good spot right here. Does have that equalizer, Ooh. uses it immediately. Look at this tight corridor. Real good oh, no. for the rumble here. Going to be able to pick up a kill, but there might be in some trouble. Here comes Bondi. Here comes Arthur Dent. The whole U.S. Army is here. Arthur Dent is going to be the one picking up the kill. It's a one for one around this red buff. Yeah, a little bit tough for the side of uh, Chihuahua there. Thought he was in a 1v1, but instead ended up being a 1v4. Gets the kill, though, which is really good. And uh vex says bug xd i'm not sure what in exactly that meant maybe the fear didn't go off as intended but uh also hecarim just kind of ran through rumble and didn't knock him back so that might have been the bug but regardless it is a one for one yeah it's it's a pretty good pickup here i think i think when you have someone who's greeting that hard for a kill you have to punish them at that stage especially when you're even you can't let a team who's ahead get away with free gold like Chihuahua was trying to do there. So real good pickup for them is Mythic Esport. They're doing the same thing they did at level one, oh. except this time they're level eight and level nine. Yeah, that's a good uh, tidal wave coming in here. Bonnie taking incredibly low. McGrub is going to be the one picking up the kill here. Is Arthur Dent once again diving onto Tadura in the top lane. But now it's a 3v2 in the bot lane. And we have to keep our eyes down there as the red team has taken out that, dr that turret in the bot lane. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to be just, yeah. I'm going to back away here is Chihuahua. Oh my god, once again, looking for the kill on a happy dream here. Those are a bunch of spells, but not able to get anything. It's Tadur still feeling the pain in the top lane. Yeah, Arthur Dent is just having fun here, playing with the food. As you said, uh, Knife Grandma is just sort of kicking down the door saying, let me in. And uh, this Yone, it's it's so hard to play Yone from behind, and that's really what Tetsuo is facing. You need to get to that. I think the main power spike is getting your shield bone, getting a little bit more crit, but here comes the fight. Yeah, they're going to be pulled back to their soul here. Arthur Dent is going to look for that Hextech ultimate, and that's going to be the Fate Seal, trying to get into that last bit of damage, not able to find it, but Arthur Dent is going to be the one picking up the return kill here as James' husband, Janna's husband is now going to be the target here. As here comes Kaz and Fitzirk. They're trying to get them to run, do the oh. run around here, but maybe they'll be able to get the kill. Happy not this time. That last bit of damage, not going to be able to happen with Vex. Still looking for that cheeky kill, not able to find it. It's a two for one in the top lane. And... Vitzer, I think, flashed in front of Chihuahua just to make sure that wasn't the ultimate coming out. What a support play. It wasn't, so it looks a little bit silly, but it's the thought that counts, and I give a big shout-out to Vitzer for that. Yeah, it's really, really good. I'm loving this Imperial Mandate on the Nami for sure. You know, there was a lot of... I, I think, like, Imperial Mandate is, like... is really funny because, like you said about the Electrocute, 
if she puts Tide Caller's Blessing onto Lucian and Lucian gets a slow with the auto attack, that triggers Imperial Mandate. So they get the bonus damage and they get the slow and they get a second bit of bonus damage and they get a third bit of bonus damage. Why don't you? Isn't that great? <laughs> it's really nice to just have Nami feel strong again. As, as you said, yes. you, you say you play a lot of Nami. I've been playing a decent amount of Nami yet. And uh, I don't know, a couple, I don't know if you remember this, but a couple of years ago on Reddit, there was like a a poll to see who is the least hated champion in League. And it was up, like Nami was up there with like Braum and those other ones. And yeah, it's sort of just showing that Nami is feels extremely balanced, but also can be strong in the right hands. And thus far, we've seen this bot lane, the Lucian Nami combo really coming through. Uh, with a stellar performance, and this was sort of the lane that was, I dare say, a bit understated last game as Mumu forced the flash. But uh, with Fitzerk back in here, really popping off the score sheet this time around. Yeah, as as the Baron is spawning in just about in in a couple minutes here, it might be the uh, the uh, the next objective to look for here. If the red team is able to get a little bit more farther ahead here, they're up a. A little more than 2,000 gold, 2.3 it looks like is the difference here. So both these teams looking pretty good here as McGrow, but might have found out Jana's husband here. He's going in Viz, looking for the burst damage has there, but it's a 1v3 right now. That's going to be the face shield and the tidal wave coming across. Yone is taunted on the backside, going to be killed, picking up by the Amumu here. As two of the blue team members fall, Arthur Dent oh. is now found the Lucian. You think you're good? Oh. You think you can run, the, run through this game? Absolutely not. Knife Grandma comes in with the kill. It's a four for nothing. And wow, glue eaters just come back. They finally had enough glue to eat. And they're they're getting themselves fed right now. They're they're fully stocked up on Elmers or whatever they had. Because that was a really well played fight. And the only member who wasn't there was Chihuahua, who was split pushing on the bot side. But in the end, well played. And uh, eaters are going to be able to take a little bit of a lead here, actually, for the first time this series, up about 500 gold and. Look and expand more on that as Arthur Dent cuts down top turret. How messed up do you think it is that Hecarim is on the glue eaters? <laughs> How messed up do you think it is? That's cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> do you think it's messed up? I think it's a little messed I, up. I think it's really messed up. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then Hecarim's also 0 4. He's died the most on his team. <laughs> Do you, do you think everyone, uh, do you think Hecarim isn't eating glue and everyone else is just eating Hecarim after he dies? Hecarim has four hoofs for the four kills he's given over at the four Yeah! Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders, you're doing a great job. We're just messing around. We're just, <laughs> you know what? This is this is one of those four fun casts where we're like, you know what? Let's go. Yeah, but, let's uh, go. But obviously, this is still a really good game coming out from both teams. I, I like to see that glue eaters are coming back <laughs> into it a little bit. I can't, God. I, I love I'm so sorry. <laughs> coming back into this, getting on their horse and getting themselves uh, a little bit more of a competitive game. But you got to keep in mind on the opposite side, there is a Cloud Soul at stake now. And uh, Mythic are going to have full control over that as their logo uh, shows with the uh, Phoenix there. They're going to be flying high if they get that Cloud Soul. Yeah, it's it's definitely looking real good. For uh, for the glue eaters here, as they as they're getting more and more into this game, you know, but you know, we were talking about them being behind, and you know, for every lane except for top, I would have agreed with you, right? And, and now we're looking at these now now that the uh, the teams are starting to get closer together, and we're getting closer to the to the late game here as folks are putting their second points into their ultimates, folks are getting their second and sometimes their third items. You know, as this game goes later, you know, I, I have to question whether or not the, the Lucian and Nami will be able to keep up with the Misfortune and Mumu here. And I think the biggest thing to keep in mind is the fact that their gold lead. Oh, Ooh. we'll get back to it. Wait a minute. Bondi has to throw out the Curse of the Sad Mummy here, and the bullet time is good as well. That's two kills for the blue team here. They're now looking for more. A happy, dream, a happy Dream is on a killing spree. Maybe they might be turning themselves into a nightmare here as... Yeah, okay. Arthur Dent still looking for more to do. Oh, no. Hextech ultimatum on us as well. You can't do this to the poor man. As now he's oh, going to die what? back. And there's the page seal. There's the re-engage. Chihuahua is actually doing a huge chunk of damage. Able to get a kill for themselves here. But it's a 3v1 now for the poor Rumble. As they're going to go down to the end of that little scuffle. It's a double kill. And I believe that would have been an ace had Kaz died. So it was really, really close to an ace. But not quite this time. I'm just really surprised that Tetzio was able to 
find their way around to pick up at least one. So a little bit more gold going into the Yone's pocket. In the end, it's slim pickings. And with this dragon spawning in seven seconds, we aren't going to see the Phoenix rise from the ashes quite yet. But Mythic are starting to fall apart in some of these team fights. I wanted to point out specifically the gold difference between the junglers is really the only one in favor of the side of uh, Mythic at this point. Arthur Dent is so far ahead of Yone. Almost 2,000 gold. Up. That's the gold lead at this point. Ooh, Macro oh, might actually be... Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> Excuse me, Riot. The uh, knife grandma says no more. No more fight. You go to your room. You're grounded. Yeah, effectively, it's just Camille saying, you know, I was the OP champion before you, Viego. You don't know where I've come from. Just yeah. cuts them down in the tracks. And two and a half items on this Camille is definitely a devastating point, especially considering there's also a two item Vex on the enemy team. Kaz knows what's up. I don't think Kaz wants to know what's up, but oh, Ooh. never mind. Kaz knows what's up. Yeah, Kaz does know what's up. Vex is. Vex is, is put to sleep as now, oh, okay, oh. the Fate Seal is not going to land, and there's the Hextech Ultimatum again, as Arthur Dent is going to be able to pick up a kill, but Chihuahua and Fitzirk might have found out Bondi here, going to be knocked up into the air by the bubble. They're going to be able to Ooh. dash over the wall, oh, oh. double auto? Not going to happen this time. Kaz is looking for it. There's the <laughs> culling coming down, going to be able to pick up the kill onto the sad mummy. Jana's husband doesn't look like he wants to engage with just a little bit more. Oh, Did he cancel could... his own auto? Did it go outside of range? What I, happened? I think it was, like, didn't attack move and might have auto like clicked on him and then they hit, hit into the bush or something like that but they okay. are going for this baron jenna's husband knows this is happening this could be very devastating for mythic if they don't play this right yeah they have a teleport coming in for the vex who who's just respawned as well it's really tough they want to engage the stun oh. guns out that's the equalizer as well happy tree oh my god one after another they keep falling oh. my oh. is able to turn this around he's become vex he used his ultimate and maybe turn back into viego maybe get another kill but he's not gonna happen this time it's a full it's nearly an ace tador is not there and now they're able to go and grab the baron as well john his husband coming up huge arthur dent coming up huge as well 12 3 and 2 on this camille holy moly they're gonna grab the baron buff as well put it on the four members of their team this is looking good for glue eaters happy dream straight out of nowhere combo breaker comes through just absolutely decimates that backline with a huge fear and at the end of that you could just see arthur den able to slice through the enemy team like a warm stick of butter and just it's so difficult to see how mythic are able to get back into this this camille is way too fed yeah, it's it's definitely looking really really tough. As uh, it's it's, you know, I I see the Lucian with with some good items. I see Viego with good items, and he was able to go toe to toe with Camille for a little bit. But man, it's really looking tough for Mythic to get back into this game. It just seems like if if they try to find out with someone one v one, unless it's Vex, right? Then then they're going down, right? They were able to find the kill on the Bondi and happy dream here but it feels like if it Teleport? was anyone else oh okay oh. he's out there hey chihuahua's out of there happy dream didn't have the fear up that's really unlucky that was uh really yeah. close yeah chihuahua just a little too far forward but what's important is that they have now gotten rid of that that uh that oh Man, okay, Mythic Esports really playing with fire here, playing <laughs> super far up than they probably should be here. Tadur, even in the top lane, pushing out that turret, as now it looks like they're going to be trading in this bot lane, as look at this huge wave gathered up by the blue team here. Yeah, they're just able to gather everything up and push forward onwards. They go with this Baron, and, you know, we were looking at Mythic as potentially having their win condition in the soul, and... It's just falling all apart here. Arthur Dent is just way too strong on this Camille. 12, 3, and 2. What an outstanding performance. And Ooh, ah. wait a minute. That's a huge fear, and that's going to be Onslaught of Shadows coming down as well. The Tidal Wave comes across, but only going to knock oh. only going to knock the Hecarim into the air. Not going to really huge. It's going to stop. It's oh. not going to stop this Camille from running rampant on this back line here. Holy moly. Oh that's going to be the ultimate onto Chihuahua here. Can they get the reset? That's a yes. Tador has now finally joined the fight back up, but he's still and has to 1v3 now. Tador, a one man and a dream. Is there maybe be able to get it? Nope, not this time. That's an ace for Jana's husband. They get two kills, but they lose all members. It's a, It's an ace by the blue team here is now with this baron buff and this huge camille they're able to push down one turret they're able to push down more and the blue team is definitely going to be winning this game
Their blue side is just too strong, and Glue Eaters, they're able to overcome their horse difference, and uh, they come away with a victory, so it looks like the horse will live to see. <laughs> and I, can't, I can't. I need to stop with these horse glue jokes, man. Oh, my God. I'm so, you know what? I gave you the brain worms, so I'm going to take responsibility. It's fine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. I put, the, I put the thought in your head. It's my fault. You know what? It's this is just a classic Sunday night cast. This is this is the sort of stuff that <laughs> we can only really do on style because it's it, this is the sort of stuff that's fun. I love this cast. This yeah. is great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean this was I, I think all the things we wanted to say about this game was like pretty much already said as like, you know, whenever they tried to whenever Mythic tried to find one V ones, unless it was against a happy dream, they weren't really coming out on top. And then, you know, in 5v5 fights where they're supposed to be strong, especially with the equalizer and the tidal wave and, uh, and the culling, it looked like they would be very strong. But, you know, Curse of the Sad Bullet Time is insanely good, you know, and, and even on a misfortune that might not be like, you know, the most fed person on your team, it's, it still hurts. It still hurts. Misfortune still hurt. Yeah, Misfortune still did a decent amount in the backside there, but uh, overall, I just think Happy Dream really showed that Chihuahua wasn't the best Vex and that, you know, this is how you play this champion. Really well played coming out from a, a Happy Dream just to really take over the later stages of that game. But Arthur Dent, you got to ban this guy's Camille. He was so strong on that and just feeling so free to blind pick that into whatever just made it so difficult for Tetsuo to feel like they could do anything this game. Yeah, for sure. But with that, we are going to take just a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to be on the rift of, or we're going to be in picks and bands of Glue Eaters versus Mythic Esport. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this.
everyone. Welcome back to Style Esports Season 9. My name is Shinkari, and I'm joined by Rare Adam, and we are in picks and bans of game number three of the Glue Eaters versus Mythic Esports. Mythic Esports on the blue side, Eaters is on the red, and it looks like we're still having relatively the same bans here, but Mythic Esports have opted for the Camille here, who, uh, when play when run by Arthur Dent, uh, kind of ran away with the game. Yeah, it definitely left a dent in their ego after all of that. Oh my goodness, I'm so surprised. Look what's first picked, Shankari. Oh my god, wow. Misfortune first pick. Oh my god, wow. And big surprise there. Yeah. It's been a long week, guys. Is there anyone who's watching? Yeah, it's been a long week. <laughs> it's been a God, long every single every single time I, I like I, I think nearly every game I have casted within the past week have had people first picking misfortune. If they're blue. Oh, yeah. And I'm just like, if if y'all like think Misfortune is so powerful, how come none of y'all are banning her? Like, honestly, because now Eaters is locking in a Moo Moo to take it away from to take it away from Mythic. Ooh. But Mythic can just lock in Leona. <laughs> yeah, the Ziggs is coming through, though, and this is a little bit of a switch up. VC going to be pulling that down most likely to the bot lane. And instead of Curse of the Bullet Time, you get the Curse of the Mega Inferno Bomb, which I dare say is probably a little scarier. Yeah, I mean it's debatable because you do have at least some time because that that stun on the uh, on this curse that mummy has been uh, reduced a whole lot from after uh, Muma got that second charge there. So you're really uh, unless you aim it and on top of the person that you're really looking for instead of looking for everyone on the inside of the uh, of the curse, and you're really going to be able to deal the damage. I just think that like it's not. It seems really good. I just don't think it's as good as people. Um, uh, I just don't think it's as good as folks would, as, as it would have it seem. But Nautilus and Silas are going to be locked in for Mythic Esport here. And I think this is actually hilarious because Mythic Esport was like, fine, you guys can have a Moo Moo. We'll just take your ultimate. <laughs> yeah, the, yo, Silas. Yeah, Silas coming through is very good. We've seen this a lot as a counter pick at World specifically, but... Akshan coming through, swinging into the mid lane. Um, I know how much of a fan of Akshan Shankari is in terms of lore, and uh, I'll let you take it away, Shankari. <laughs> Akshan is a Mary Sue with an overloaded kit. Um, that's it. Um, I got into an argument with someone about it, um, and it made me mad because they were just like, well, all they do is auto attack. It's just like, just because they're a marksman doesn't mean their they're, uh, kits can't be overloaded. And, and then people were like, "Oh yeah, he just has a he just has a a, a whole bunch of text, but it doesn't do anything." It's like all that group, all that text does something. Yes, all the text wouldn't be necessary if you were playing Vayne or something like that. Vayne tumbles. Yeah. Her next auto attack deals bonus damage. Done. See, it's that yeah. easy. But instead, yeah, it's that away. easy. Uh, but, it, but you know, Akshan needs to have you know old Garen passive and an invisibility on one ability. Yes. It yes. Is, it is going to be interesting to see how this matchup works, though, because I have not seen a Silas steal uh, an Akshan ult yet, so I'll have to see what that looks like, because I always like yeah. to see some of the really silly ultimates that uh, Silas can take. I think one of my favorites is Twitch, where really? Silas just starts to auto-attack, like spin his, uh, use his Petrocyte Burst, but it's from like 400 range away because Twitch just gives you a base 300 <laughs> range. So all of a sudden you're looking at over walls and Silas is just swinging his arms around autoing something. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my favorite at least. That's, well, uh, that's actually really funny. Yeah, the Lee Sin comes through though. This is definitely not a Vex level champion in terms of sleeper. It's very exciting. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's pretty good here. Uh, uh, I think it's a very strong uh, jungle champion that we've been seeing a whole lot of recently. And there's another champion I've been seeing a whole lot of. There's Shin Zhao. Oh, interesting to see that the junglers are falling this far down the draft. A lot of the times that was your token blind pick, so to speak. There's a Lee Sin. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I, we are not stopping with the I think, the it, I mean, I didn't think it was that good of a joke, but you know, man, like, I'll give it to you. Like, hats <laughs> off. Like, you get a ha. I mean, usually it would be Zin Zhao getting first picked, but now since bot lane is yeah. so important, you gotta pick that misfortune. You know, it has moved down in priority, but the Zin Zhao definitely has a lot of combo potential with the Silas, and now the Malphite coming through to sort of 
almost give Silas the opportunity not to steal it away, but have it just for yourself anyways. Not a bad combo for Mythic here. They have the Wombo combo on tap once again. Yeah, it's just interesting to me that Eaters didn't pick up the Shins out here. Um, I, if you, if I like Jana's husband does have some experience on Shin Zhao as their third most played champion. And a lot of people who want to play against Misfortune will lock in Shin Zhao for the same reason that they're locking in the Gwen here. You know, when you, when you use the Shin Zhao ultimate or when you use the, the Gwen mist, you're immune to damage from everything outside your little circle, your little zone, you know, your little safe space, you know, and if Misfortune is trying to kill you, with that big ultimate, you can just ignore the damage, dive on top of her, and then be able to then interrupt the ultimate or pressure Misfortune and cause her to cancel it and try to run away. You know, it, and and that's why that's why I'm just a little odd to see the Shin Zhao not being picked up by Eaters here. But, you know, I think Mythic picking up still pretty good here. Blocks come up and, and definitely blocks Mega Inferno Bomb as well for the Shin Zhao. Yeah, the one fun part about it is that if Gwen uses her uh, mist and there's someone behind that Gwen could possibly block the shocks the shots for it'll just go right through and end up not being so happy but overall that's just a very small chance of happening I like the fact that they're going for this Lee Sin here more so because everyone was always like oh lane Lee Sin is too strong they nerfed him they nerfed him he got back into the jungle but he's very good into a lot of the junglers that are prominent nowadays you know, Lee Sin is one of those early game junglers who's always had that force to be reckoned with. I remember uh, back in the day where you just go red buff mid as Lee Sin every single time and got a level two gank off. And in some ways, that's sort of the identity that Lee Sin is rediscovering. But now with these early game junglers, you can just go into the enemy jungle and try and mess with the opponent. And Lee Sin can outplay a Xin Zhao, who is a very simple champion. Lee Sin has ways to dodge around that wind becomes lightning and really make their mark. Yeah, it is definitely going to be a match to watch for sure. I'm definitely excited to see the Shin Zhao, like you said, come out here. Uh, I, I think it is going to be a very good... Once again, both these teams have been opting for some fairly early ganks. Uh, fairly early gank junglers with uh, with Hecarim, with Viego, with J4, right? So seeing the Shin Zhao here in the Lee Sin means that we're probably going to see still some action level 3. I don't know if we're going to see so far as to maybe go like buff buff gank. But maybe like clear topside gank, grab grab the second, grab uh grab blue or whatever the other uh whatever side you're on, that but that the second the bot side buff. As it takes me like five minutes to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one thing I wanna see is how Lee Sin opts the path here. You know, you have Gwen who doesn't really provide a whole lot of gank assist. Same with Akshan, so really your only gank potential is in that bot side, but into Misfortune Nautilus especially, this Nautilus is going to throw a wrench into the plan considering it is a little bit harder to take down. And Lee Sin, you know, if you don't have your kick, you can't really take advantage of the beefcake staying in front of that Misfortune. So going to keep an eye on how Jenna's husband plays this out because while it's a good champion, all things considered, I still believe it's going to be interesting to see how exactly it plays out into the enemy comp here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I, I think this is pretty good as well. I, I'm liking I'm liking both comps here. I, I'm liking the Gwen as a counter pick into the Misfortune and maybe as a better pick into the Malphite. I'm loving the Silas to be able to bra grab a Mumu ultimate or maybe a, either comeuppance as well from Akshan. That's gonna be fun to see. Um, I'm I'm really hoping. What I hope more than anything is that. Silas, I know they probably didn't do this, but I hope Silas just starts spinning his chains around in front of him and make it look like the gun that Akshan has. And then he just fires out all the guns at once, but he's probably not going to do that. And I'm going to be very upset about it. That um, I love the... I love the depth charge to 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 keep people inside the the bullet time here. There's there's just a lot of there's a lot of things to love about both team comes here. Yeah, I think that the Silas especially has some really interesting alt to steal. Uh, Amumu, of course, you get your own curse of the bullet time in some ways with that Silas stealing away the Amumu ultimate. You can also get you know some decent Silas combos off with kicks. I know you can do a. Uh, I th you can effectively do uh, a Silas sec if you steal that Lee Sin ultimate. You E forward, flash behind them, kick them, and then follow with your chains. It looks pretty cool, so maybe we'll see that happen from Chihuahua. Of course, this is just a lot of theory crafting, but regardless, yeah. some really good ultimates We call that steal. a not sec. We call that a not sec? A, a non-a sec? Um, a, no, not <laughs> sec. 
Also, <laughs> we're losing it today. <laughs> Funny, funny is that's the guy. That's the guy from Unicorns of Love. Yeah, ha -ha, I, I, funny. Never, I, I was always wondering why it was a haha -ha sick until I realized that it's probably just the Cyrillic character that they need to make an H because it doesn't exist and it's probably the backwards N. <laughs> I think. I don't. Know. All right. We are going to take just a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to be on the rift of Mythic Esport versus Glue Eaters. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Hello everyone, welcome back to Style Esports Season 9. My name is Shin Kari and we're on and I'm joined by Rare Adam. I was about to not introduce my co-caster. Uh as we're on the rift between Glue Eaters and Mythic Esport. Glue Eaters is on the red side. Mythic Esport is on the blue, and both of these teams are looking to invade the other level one. Yeah, it looks like uh for the time being it's uh Mythic Esports swapping sides once again, saying, hey, you know, we didn't have a great game on red side, so let's just go to red side early here, as is uh, answered on the flip side. So early invades coming through and just 
very little happens from this, which is really interesting. It's my favorite part about seeing five man invades. Like sometimes four man invades are more interesting because you know you might run into one person or you run into the entire enemy team. So uh, regardless, they're just getting vision everywhere, and this is this is kind of interesting. Yeah, the Vizzy actually puts a ward in a very very good spot right there. It's a little deep. But uh, but it ultimately is going to be spotting out uh, Shen Zhao on where they start and be able to know their pathing as well. It, okay, they weren't actually spotted out by that first ward there, but Tadur, looking for Arthur Dent here, does get a bit of damage to start off this lane in the top lane there, but spent a whole lot of mana to do it. Yeah, it drops a uh, cheese wheel down. You know, it is a lot of mana, but, you know, it's poke. But, uh... Oh, Ziggs. I, I thought that was a Lilia ball for a sec. I was really confused, but uh, regardless, yeah, Jenna's husband going to start on that bot side here. Both junglers actually starting on that bot side, but uh, more information known by the side of Glue Eaters, so they're going to have some uh, more knowledge as to where Xin Zhao might be aiming his spear next as we'll see what the Lee Sin opts to go for. Still curious to see where exactly this Lee Sin ganks first. Yeah, I'm... I'm assuming that he's going to go into the top lane here based on his pathing. Like, it would be weird for him to, like, clear this bot side and then loop all the way back down. As the level 2 is happening on the bot side here, MCC has getting real good onto Bondi here, but he's going to be backing away. As, yeah, it's it's not going to be... I, I think he's just going to be going into the top lane. It, it's It will be very weird to start blue, work your way up to the top side, and then just work your way all the way down. Yeah, and it looks like maybe like top lane just doesn't seem gankable to me at least not for the side of jenna's husband unless that deal has taken down incredibly low and they go for a dive but akshan starting to leave this lane and get some vision down as well this is interesting gameplay coming out from glue eaters and they've actually got quite uh, a bit of cs advantage just by virtue of their waves being super pushed in and grobe might be in a lot more trouble than we think yeah, Hibitzerg actually doesn't land the hook, but still is able to be pulled into melee range because of how the, the hook lands is... Oh my god, okay! The entire US army is here around the blue buff here, gonna steal it away from Shin Zhao and give it over to Lee Sin here, so Macrobe is probably not only going to lose that blue buff, but also that uh, that Scuttle Crab as well, and that's all thanks to that early ward that they placed around the wraiths there, or the, excuse me, the chickens. Yeah, and the early war just showed exactly where Xin Zhao was moving and, you know, doesn't get that blue buff, gets it stolen away. And now Lee Sin has an opportunity on this top side to gank with double buffs. Yeah, Arthur Ten really fo forcing out to do her to throw out that flash. And, you know, Malphite is usually that that character you pick when all you need is that uh, is that bit of, um is that Arth. You know, you're just like, hey, if I'm just going to fall behind and land, I'm just going to show up and use my R and walk out. Maybe that'll work. <laughs> yeah, and for the time being, at least, in this bot side, it's sort of going the opposite of the other lanes. Kaz and Fitzerk have a little bit of that push. And of note, Vizzy really loves building Cull. This is a Cull and a Ziggs. Yeah, this, it's pretty interesting. I feel like it's going to be relatively fine, right? You have the Doran's item, and it's not the end of the world. I just think it's really interesting because, like, Ziggs isn't exactly a character you build a, a cull on. His build isn't exactly expensive, but Chihuahua might be in some trouble here. Is Happy Dream gonna ri ricochet over with that with that uh, that uh, that oh. grappling hook? Though Happy Dream taking incredibly oh low. Ugh. That was that was skin of their teeth. I feel like any other player would have been like, "Wait a minute, I can go back in and get a kill." Hold on. But Chihuahua's just like, "No, no, no, I'm good." All right, Matt Grubb is looking looking like the one that wants to do it here. Is that going to be the teleport coming in? That's going to be Leeson having to run for their life here. Dashing forward, doesn't land the hook. Matt Grubb's still looking for more. Leeson's going to land the Q, but I don't think going to going to follow up with the dive here. So no kill in the mid lane. Yeah, unfortunately not going to be able to pick anything up and still no kills on the board, but just CS differences going over to the side of... Uh, of glue eaters here and looking at that top side a lot of it coming off at the back of arthur dent once again i dare say i'm not surprised that this guy is uh starting to dominate tet Duel a little bit more but want to point a small fact out this time tet do hard had 2000 as we've been saying first game played the tank they won second game did not play, play a tank and they lost They're playing a tank but might be building more ap i can't decide whether that's a good thing or not yeah it's it's interesting to see in mac was Matt Grubb not spotted out by the Amumu? No way. 
No way he wasn't. Well, Bundy's got spot. Oh, oh, but, okay, but Bundy's in some trouble here. He's taking a bit of damage here. Okay, below half HP. Ignite is ticking, taking incredibly low, but not going to be able to tap into this time. That's going to be Janna's husband diving back in, but that's going to be Fitzer picking up the first blood on the tail end of all that Ignite damage. Janna's oh. husband still looking for more. Going to throw out the Sonic Strike. Going to get a whole bunch oh. of damage. Going to be able to get the res and another kill as Whoa. well. Janna's husband is going real good, but now Happy Dream might have diving in just a little too deep here. That's going to be a double kill for Kaz and a real good pickup for mythic esport it ties them out in terms of gold but in terms of kills mythic esport is ahead by one and of note the gold going into misfortune's pocket is exactly what we want to see because Kaz on this misfortune in game one had an incredible performance opted to go i believe for kraken slayer that game but this time opting for lethality you know with the uh, lack of a secondary frontliner on the side of glue eaters they feel a little bit more comfortable going for that higher burst potential and eclipse looks to be the option so very interested to see how that all works out uh shinkari i know you and i were talking about how you know we've seen a lot of kraken slayer maps and not so much eclipse in terms of uh you know lower ranked games compared to pro but here we go eclipse map coming through yeah, Eclipse MF is, is pretty strong. Does put all the eggs into the ultimate basket there, but I think Fitzerk is going to have to run for their life. May have to chicken out here as they're going to back away. As, yeah, I, you know, Eclipse is really good. Um, Eclipse is, is pretty good. It doesn't give you that crit strike that, uh, that um, excuse me, uh, Kraken Slayer has, but, you know, ultimately it's going to, that damage is going to give you just a little bit more as, God, Jonas has been doing. Showing up a whole lot in this mid lane here. Yeah, I've been just kind of popping around, keeping the head in the game. And from what we see thus far, Chihuahua's having a really good game on this Silas thus far. Has had a couple of disappointing performances, at least on the Vex and Rumble. But thus far on the Silas, has been staying alive in lane a little bit more than last time, which is good to see because, oh my goodness, Tet Duo is not having the same fate up on that top side as Gwen is snipping down. And you always thought Rock beat Scissors. Nope. These scissors are nope. made of paper or something, so then it beats the rock. <laughs> I don't I don't know what those scissors are made out of anything. They're, they're just like big spectral scissors, aren't they? They're like not exactly metal. They're like made of magic they're or whatever. Thousand degree knife scissors that can cut through rock. <laughs> but, oh, That's gonna be the scripts of the sad mummy coming out from Chihuahua here. He's gonna be able to burst down Bondi as the rest of the blue team is showing up. That's gonna be a good hook on a happy dream. Gonna be rooted up as well. Gonna be stopping the gra grappling hook as well. So that's gonna be Kaz picking up another kill Ooh. as Garth or Dent has shown up. Gonna use that ultimate that shroud in order to stay alive. But now Vitzerk is tanking up the turret here. Has to walk away below half HP, but Arthur Dent taking a whole lot of damage from Kaz here. Can't stay there for too long. The whole blue team is in this mid lane and now I think they're going for this Drake yeah they might be going over to this ocean dragon the latest first dragon I believe we've seen thus far but mythic are definitely playing more towards their win conditions uh, in regards to getting this misfortune as much gold as possible uh, as they did in game one which worked out well for them but now VZ in some trouble I do gonna burn the flash but Oh, yeah, we got a hook on a Jonas husband, though, and this game is starting to turn around for Mythic here. Vizzy taking incredibly low. Kaz is going to be able to go on a rampage here. Vitzer looking for that last maybe CC on a happy dream, but they can't quite find it. Chihuahua doesn't want to go underneath her and maybe get a cheeky death for uh, for uh, the Akshan here and get a res. Doesn't want that to happen, so I'm probably going to pick up this first play as the rest of the team is on the Drake. Yeah, I'm going to pick up the first dragon here. Ten minutes in, so no soul is going to be a little bit more of a subdued win condition, so to speak, or a later game win condition here, as opposed to picking that up around the 20-minute mark. It's going to be more towards 28, 29 minutes at this stage, so we'll have to keep an eye on if the side of Glue Eaters can get some fights around that dragon to stall it out even further, or if it will just be Mythic stacking those dragons, because one of the trends we've seen thus far is whoever gets the more dragons, they've won the game, so... <laughs> we'll have to keep an eye on how that works out. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Mythic be able to get a lot of these early Drakes, oh, but goodness. not really. Oh, okay. McGrub coming to God. That's going to be the come up. It's coming down and be able to oh. pick up the kill as well. That's pretty big. Wait, the kill and the that's going to be. Oh, oh, is a kill onto McGrub there instead? That's that's my <laughs> bad. It's a one for one across the map here. Yeah, he dove the tower too hard. He kind of walked behind and. Unfortunately, Silas doesn't swing his chains around when he uses the comeuppance. Uh, oh. Riot, come on, man. But oh, Happy Dream, that's so lame. The Happy Dream able to pick one up on a little bit. Uh, too much Happy Time coming out from Grobe. Uh, going through those towers. And 
I've just realized we've pronounced Grobe's name like seven different ways of the series, and I'm I, I still don't know which one's the right way. Yeah, I don't know either, but Grobe's just sounds wrong. I've been going with Grub because it sounds like a it that, that does sound a little French. Grobe? A Grobe. I don't know. Yeah, there's maybe. a lot of different ways to pronounce R's in French. A little too many. A Grub. A I mean, Grub. Grub. Man, it doesn't it doesn't sound good either. It doesn't that doesn't sound good either. Hmm. It sounds I mean it sounds better, but I don't know. Is it like globe but with an R? Is it grobe? Is it like grob? Is it like a is it like is should, should there be a little hat on top of the O? Like what's up? What's up, Mac Grob? As now you want one, throwing out the curse of the sad mummy gonna be stuck in the Omega Infirm Bob and taking incredibly low, but gonna heal back up. He does have the Conqueror proc, but here comes to come up as it has to be blocked oh. by Fitzirk here. Doesn't find the execute, but now they're looking for the last bit of damage that they need. Fitzirk is tanking up the damage here. Is not a a uh he excuse said. me. Villain here is that's going to be double kill for the least and Jonas husband can look for more is dashing trying to find it but can't quite find it in the mid lane is Arthur Dent in this top lane still proving to be a bit of a trouble for Tedur here able to return a bit of damage but oh no Kaz underneath her for a little too long yeah just some interesting plays coming out across the map I think that's the main thing that I draw from all of it is that Mythic are going a little bit too aggressive when they don't necessarily need to force their agenda too hard Kaz is strong and I think they just need to slow the game down a little bit, play around this misfortune, because they're starting to go for some plays that might not be as advantageous for themselves. Chihuahua still 3-0-2, having a great performance, but uh, Grobe is starting to start to run out of room. And both of these junglers are going to fall off come later stages, but the more kills you can get and the more items you have, the longer you'll be able to stay relevant, especially in comparison to your enemy jungler. And with Lee Sin most likely finishing up that Gore Drinker on the next back, means that uh, Grobe is going to have to try and stay relevant some way, somehow. And Ted do. Oh, oh yeah. Just run by. Okay. What's up? <laughs> Unstoppable force and walk away? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> what that's, was that? That's, that's our mental state right now. It's just the it's just the rock hitting the he's, the Akshan and then walking away. Yeah, he's not even resetting. He just showed up mid. <laughs> I thought like maybe it's like I don't know what he's doing. Like maybe he was setting up for something, but then no one else dived in and he, <laughs> he was just there. And I thought like okay, maybe he's just like resetting and the ultimate's gonna be like mostly back by the time he gets back to lane. But no, he's in lane right now. Okay, now he's resetting. <laughs> What is happening? <laughs> That's like the most question mark play I've seen in this entire series. <laughs> Mythic Esport has been like so good and like not made a whole lot of huh plays, but like that was like, what is ha what is going on? Am I missing something? Is there some 5D chess going on? Like, what's up? <laughs> We've laughed for almost two thirds of the cooldown of it. So, you know what? In the end, it doesn't end up doing too much, but a yeah, happy dream just sort of getting a little surprised got hit by the Balfight ultimate and maybe just trying to burn the flash but happy dream didn't even have it up so uh, yeah uh, maybe just just sort of exerting pressure or uh you know flexing their posing below, yeah. to to exert exert dominance i don't know i think that's exactly what happened but uh, regardless malphite is gonna have the ultimate backup again so uh no harm no foul although a little bit of harm and foul to our mental uh, i think that overall though this this mythic team comp, they're starting to slow it down, but they might be slowing it down too much now. And I'm just starting to get really nitpicky, but Arthur Dent is just continuing to extend that gold lead. And Grobe is going to start up this dragon and they're going to try and get themselves to figure out what soul is happening. But two dragons into their pocket is good for mythic. It's the one thing that they're doing a little bit more proactively this time around. Yeah, and, and I like it for sure. And it's going to be another Cloud Drake here. And I think that's really good for Mythic. Mythic is definitely a, a team that wants to press that R button a whole lot. So being able to grab that as well as some movement speed as well for the Silas or maybe even the uh, the Nautilus as well could be very good. But I think most of them are looking for that ultimate ability haste, which is definitely going to be valuable for both these teams as well as... Okay, let's see Lee Sin. Doesn't want to dive like that, but Fitzirk... Showing up here does spot out a Mumu. The pressure him just a little bit. Misfortune is coming up as well. Looks like both teams are just kind of resetting here. 
And both teams just sort of deciding what's next on the map here because none of these towers have been taken. No Rift Herald was taken this game either, which is a little bit strange. And all of these towers are relatively healthy. So very extended laning phase, which is interesting to see considering how many kills we've had. But it doesn't look like any of these teams want to sort of give up that first brick. They're putting a lot of priority on just kind of keeping their side of the map safe as possible. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I, I okay, Chihuahua here gonna throw out the Everfrost as well. Look at the damage on a happy dream. Pops a lifeline shield, but here comes Arthur Dent. The comeuppance is coming out as well. Oh. Mega Inferno Bomb two flashes over the wall, but it's gonna get snipped from the other side. That's gonna be a shutdown for the Glen here. Huge pickup as Fitzirk looking for a little bit of gold in return, but the red team's ready to respond if they go any further. So they're gonna be backing away. And if they're not careful, they could be the next of all. Yeah, and they use three ultimates to pick up the Silas kill while it is a shutdown. Ooh, oh my goodness. Wait a minute, Grove not going to be knocked through. That's a great insect. Lee Sin, gonna, that's going to be the Shin Zhao ultimate coming across, but that's a bunch of melee champions. That's not going to save you for too long. They're going to walk away, pick up that kill, and that's going to be the first turret of the game being picked up in the mid lane. Yeah, finally, they're able to get themselves a couple of advantageous picks, and Glue Eaters are the first ones to take down a tower. 17 minutes in is quite late, all things considered, but they finally are able to find a fight that that they're able to take advantage of. They burn all of their ultimates, but they're able to get the kills. And that's the most important thing is they're able to get that shutdown onto Silas. They get that first tower and Xin Zhao was no, no defense really to uh, stop them from taking that tower at the end of the day. Yeah. It's it's definitely interesting to see what what uh, how, how they're translating this gold, right? And I, and I think it's interesting that we haven't seen like a lot of attention into this bot lane by McGraw here as as I, I I feel like he that you want to unlock this misfortune, right? Like she's 4-0-1 right now, 152 CS, the second highest CS in the game. Right? She's got a whole lot of gold in her pockets. Ooh, Chihuahua is some trouble here. Is gonna grab that curse of the sad mummy. That's gonna be the bullet time coming out across as well. It's gonna be interrupted here. That's gonna be Jonas' husband diving back in. Uh -oh. Inferno Bomb gonna take Kaz insanely low. Oh, He's got no. nothing left. Happy Dream flashing over the wall, looking for the last bit of damage. Gonna grappling hook all the way over there. That's gonna be the shutdown on the MF going over to going over to Akshan, but now they're on the hunt for this sad mummy here as he goes over the wall, oh. gonna get hooked up, snared, depth charge as well. This is gonna be Tador looking for a happy dream now. That's gonna be the Everfrost coming to ground, gonna be rooted as well. They're looking for the last bit of damage. He's trying to gapling hook away, not gonna be able to find it. That's gonna be a double kill for the Nautilus as well. Happy dream taking incredibly low. Let's see if they can oh. get it. That's come up and is coming across, trying to get a kill for a return, but not gonna be able to get it this time. It's a one for four, this time in favor of MTC as Arthur Dead is now joining the fight, but Festic is running for their life. They're like, absolutely not not do I want to fight that uwu anime waifu with the giant scissors. Holy moly, Shankari's going full rap god here, but what a great play coming through from the side of Mythic. They're able to find themselves four kills in a little bit of an odd fight. The misfortune goes down incredibly early, but Fitzirk just alphas on top of that Amumu, able to pick up a couple of kills overall in that fight, and now all of a sudden the most member fed member of the game is Fitzerg on this Nautilus 5, 2, and 4. Sort of just adding to the uh, level of fiesta that we've got in this game. But looking at the gold difference, the rest of the side of Mythic are down in gold. They are down in gold in every... Well, not every role. Their bot lane is ahead, but top side, they are down in gold completely. It's just the fact yeah. that this Nautilus is such a chad right now. It's going to be going on to Bondi here again. I feel like I'm yeah. more. Yeah, Kaz is there for backup as well, and that ward is probably going to heal itself up as well as Tidur. Now looking for Vissi in this top lane. This is definitely a matchup that's a little bit more favored. There's the Everfrost. Look at this damage. Unstoppable force as well. Vissi goes down. Tidur finally gets another kill in their pockets here. Now Arthur Dent might have to fight Chihuahua here, but Chihuahua wants nothing to do with that Gwen. Yeah, Chihuahua just going to stay steer clear as, uh, despite the Gwen only being 1-1-1, one, one, and one, has the most CS in the game by a decent margin over the Misfortune and then a huge margin over everyone else. So Arthur Dent is just, I feel like they're they're sitting back in their chair. They're pushing their glasses up. They're starting to look into the camera like the, the third person, fourth wall breaking thing. And you see the glint mm -hmm. go across. They're, they're charging up their power. If we're so rich, how can we can't afford a ceiling? Yeah. I'm sorry. That's my favorite fourth wall break. It's, it's from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Where all the characters are like, oh yeah, we're rich. Ha ha ha. As Tador taking some damage from Happy Dream here. That's going to be the comeuppance coming across. This is missing health damage. Oh, not this time. 
Malphite is going to be able to live, and the blue team is going to push down a little bit more. They've spawned Shelly pretty far back, so they should be able to push pretty hard here. Here comes Shelly. Here comes the charge. Here she goes. Boom! That's going to be a whole bunch of damage. And the second turret being claimed, they might actually be able to get a third charge here. Might be able to get the turret as well. Misfortune is here. Wow, that's a whole lot of damage. Let's see if they can do it. That's the Curse of the Sad Mummy coming across. That's going to be oh. Bonnie doing a whole bunch of damage. The bullet time comes across, but it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage to Jana's husband is going to be the one falling, though. That's going to be Kaz throwing out a whole bunch of damage. Let's see if they can oh. grab Bonnie. He's looking for the Misfortune here. Going to go down, though. Happy Dream looking oh. for the event, but look at the burst damage, though. Can't quite get it. Happy Dream's going to get that... Uh, a revive for a moo moo and it's a nearly an ace if Tador was there and fighting but it's a four for one ends up being a four for none it, it, yeah it ends up being i think it was four for two in terms of kills but ends up being a four for none because akshan exists but to do oh yeah found out missy there goes the full combo all he needs is everfrost in order to burst you down so to do it really doing a real good job here Going to make this uh, Baron just a little bit harder for the red team, but I don't think it's the end of the world for them as... Oh, no, he's he wants more. Yeah, This Malphite wants more. Gwen is on this Baron, so it's really difficult to take down, but uh, Tet Doom might have bitten off a little bit more than they could chew, although they're just fighting Bondi right now. Let's see what happens. Yeah, Fitzark is here as well. And Silas has oh, teleported in. They're looking to get rid of some. Uh, they're looking to get rid of some Baron buffs here. They're able to find one. Bondi goes down. Chihuahua is still on the hunt for some more. And Akshan is backing safely pretty deep into the jungle here. They're not able to find Lee Sin either. So at the end of the day, I believe that is only one less person with the Baron buff. Let's see if Ziggs got it. I think that's pretty important here. Let's see. Ziggs, did you get the Baron buff? No. So there's not. two members without a Baron buff. Yeah, unfortunately, the bot lane not going to have that uh, Baron buff. But in reality, as long as you have either your Gwen, Lee Sin, or Akshan joining you in that mid lane, you should be okay. But... I think not, they want to try and go for a 4-1 here, so trying to get one of the or the Baron buff off of Gwen should be their highest priority, but gold is still even, all things considered, despite uh, Mythic taking a little bit of a gold lead off of taking all of these towers down. The Baron is ending up swinging it back in their favor, but now Soul is on the agenda in two minutes. Uh, Cloud Soul, so not the most important once again, but Malphite appreciates that. Uh, MF appreciates it. Nautilus appreciates it. Silas, meh. And, uh, yeah, Zin Zhao, Silas, meh. meh. Yeah, I don't think Shin Zhao is, if, if it's going to be the end of the world for him. I don't know how much damage he's actually reducing with how many melee champions and short range characters are on the enemy team, but Tadur looking for Bondi here. That's oh. a real easy pickup. Doesn't even need to use oh, no. Unstoppable Force, but that's a teleport coming in from the Gwen right now. Going to be inside the mist, so not going to be able to take that much damage from things outside of his husband diving onto the backside here. That's a real good hook by the myth. By Fitzherk here, going to be able to turn it around. Bullet time comes across, but doesn't land on anyone, but Arthur Dennis is a whole lot of trouble. There's the Unstoppable Force. Going to be able to pick up three kills for themselves one kill and one death in response this is a real good pickup for mythic esport they're walking down the mid lane gonna take down this inhibitor yeah Vizzy and happy dream are the only lines of defense but i think that this actually oh they're all lining up oh that was a yeah, really yeah, good yeah. gotta block charge. up a whole bunch of damage here Ooh. remember this is missing health damage from the comeuppance here so that's why kaz was feeling safe to tank it up it does do a decent chunk of damage but not gonna do as much as it probably would have to fit Zerk or chihuahua yeah, they're able to bust open the inhib, and now the only Baron buff on the enemy team is on that Akshan, but honestly, it was really close. If they got that comeuppance, the entire team would have respawned, and there could have been a, uh, a run back, but Happy Dream is just cosplaying old Twitch when he had stealth for 60 seconds, just making sure everyone's leaving as they're supposed to be. But uh, Dragon is spawning in 45 seconds. I think that's where our next big fight's going to be. And while Cloud Soul isn't the be-all, end-all, as we're saying, it's still a worthwhile objective to fight over. You don't want to have Elder spawning in six minutes when Mythic are relatively ahead still. Yeah, I mean, Mythic is still doing real well. And with this 30-second timer on this Drake, look at what... Uh, Look at what the uh, the glue eaters are already doing here. They're already here. They're already throwing out their own vision here. They're trying to get control of this side of the map. They're doing a pretty good job of it as well. As now uh, Mythic getting in the edges here. They do spot out a ward in that in the pixel brush there, but they don't have a ward in the banana brush, so they have to be just a little bit safe. Uh, yeah, Arthur Dent 
It's going to be spotted out here. A whole bunch of wards used, but they can't still quite find. Oh, flash over the wall. Bondi looking for the curse of the sad mummy, but that challenge is going to be very good. That's going to be the bullet time coming across. They're going to be able to find that first kill. And Bondi, second kill with the Nautilus on the Lee Sin. Let's see if they can get the third. Yes, that's going to be them going down. Is now a happy dream is running for their lives and has to play like a season one Mercy running away in order to hide and then res their whole team. Yeah, at least that's going to be the attempt, but console going to go down and now Mythic are looking like the juggernaut that can't be slot. This is really, this isn't a big gold lead. That's the main thing that is so confusing to me. The fact that this gold lead is only 2,000 in favor of Mythic, despite them having so many more turrets and so many uh, more objectives, even more kills. But if we just look at that gold, it is still the fact that this Gwen is 1,000 gold up on the Malphite. This Xin Zhao is 1,000 gold down on the enemy uh the enemy Lee Sin there and Silas is still down in gold somehow so all of that gold is just through that bot lane so Kaz still the most important member you've got to make sure that they are able to get that full curse or just the normal bullet time sorry uh but Nautilus also has eight kills yeah Fitzirk is happy Fitzirk yeah. is very Fitzirk. happy yeah as a fellow support as a fellow support main hats off to you bud like you're living the dream <laughs> get your get yourself a get yourself an abyssal mask. You've earned it. <laughs> demonic, you know what? You know what? Demonic visage. Get yourself a demonic visage. Yeah, You've de earned demonic it. Demonic embrace would be great here. Demonic Honestly, embrace would be really good. That that's the play, but uh, don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, Fitzer just picks up a bunch of control wards. What a real support coming through. But yeah, uh, Baron is running in. 50 seconds, and this could be the end game objective. Cloud Soul, as we said, not super end game. It's not like it's an Infernal Soul where all of a sudden you get a whole bunch of extra damage injected into your veins. But uh, Fitzerk here, gonna be hex flashing over those walls, just doing whatever they can. If they get this Baron, it is the potential to end the game, but they've also got to find some kills because. Arthur Den is doing a really good job of clearing out these waves, and Akshan is also very... Akshan Ziggs, they have a very good stall comp on the side of Glue Eater, so the longer this game goes, the scarier it gets for the side of Mythic Esport. Yeah, and it's definitely looking really tough uh, already, because they, they've already set out a whole bunch of vision here, so now they have to spend some time clearing it out, but now, like, like look at the vision inside the river here for the red team. It's non-existent, but this might be Fitzirk being caught out here, but Bondi taking a whole lot of damage in response. The wind has become lightning, but it doesn't look like they're able to dive onto that side just yet. And still haven't started up this Baron. It looks like they're just trying to wait for maybe their mid wave to push in a little bit more. You can see that Vizzy forced to move over there to clear out that wave. On the bot side, though, they don't have Pryo over that wave. I would have liked to see either Chihuahua or Tetzuel down there pushing to put some more pressure, but here comes the engage from Arthur Dent, at least. Yeah, Fitzirk is in some trouble here. They're going to block up a bit of that damage. He's not going to go down to oh. the comeuppance, but Arthur Dent still looking for some more. They've gone over Bonnie. the wall here. Bonnie's taking incredibly low as Arthur Dent is fighting 1v3. They're going to go down. Fitzirk is going to get time. another kill. That's the bullet time coming across. Jonas' husband is able to dive on top of the on top of the misfortune, but is going to be traded back for a kill. It's a two for one. They've, they're have they off the Baron right now. Let's see what they're looking for. It looks like they're just going right back to the Baron there, even though they don't have the misfortune there. Yeah, and they don't have a whole lot of damage for this. They're really depending on Xin Zhao to do the damage. This is going to be a very slow Baron take, and honestly, Happy Dream could probably pull up and do a little bit of poke here, but Kaz going down, giving over that shutdown to the Lee Sin, probably the best target you could give it to at this stage of the game, but it's still not great to have your uh, Lee Sin off the map. You can see that unfortunately, there's no contest coming through from Glue Eaters, but will they wait the... They, they're not going to wait for that to come through. Yeah. Uh, Kaz won't have the Baron, but overall, they still get that buff, and Move their gold lead up to just over three and a half thousand gold and still not a massive gold lead, but it is there. Yeah, it's it's definitely looking pretty good for them, for sure. And let's see, did Kaz pick up that buff? Nope, they do not have the Baron buff. So it's only going to be four members of the blue team with the Baron buff. It's still looking pretty good for them, for um for um, blue eaters here. They're really their only wave clear is going to be or the only efficient wave clear that they're going to have is going to be with Happy Dream with that boomerang blade that he has. A lot of these barren up minions are not going to be easily snipped down by Gwen or by Zig's bombs here. So they are going to going to have to dedicate Akshan to some of these waves here to try to clear them out. 
as the blue team is now getting ready to push through this bot side. They're already doing a great job of clearing out wards on their flank and making sure that they have vision control on this side as Misfortune and Malphite are pushing up the side waves. Yeah, and for some reason, this game just, like, it's, it's been so slow except for when there's action. And when the action comes, just comes in waves. And 42 kills in 30 minutes is no by no means a slow game, but Mythic are playing this really well, just taking their time, pushing in their waves and not trying to over-engage onto anything. But there's a five-man stack here, and Ted Deal has that ultimate and is level 16, so at any moment's notice, they could just go for... Would it be the unstoppable bullet time if it's a Malphite MF combo? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Unstoppable bullet time. Unstoppable time. Unstoppable. I don't. That's that, a zillion. That, that that. work. <laughs> that's yeah. a zillion thing. I that, think. that would be that would be a zillion. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't regardless. think. Yeah. It, regardless. Yeah. I, I, once again, it's really hard to actually push into this team here. Right, they just have so much good wave clear. Like they were able to get that one turret, but grabbing the inhibitors is insanely different. It's just a much different story here. So they're resetting now. They're putting now they're focusing this uh, the the vision around the entryway to the river here. They're setting up a death brush. I don't think there's no way. There's no way Glue Eaters falls for this. No, I think honestly one of the biggest issues with the, this gold lead is a lot of it's on the Nautilus, but they're gonna pull Ooh, the trigger now. Yeah, that's oh, oh yeah, that's amazing bullet time. The shroud wasn't able to come down as soon as they'd like, and now Arthur Dent is in a whole lot of trouble. One v one in Grove oh. inside the mist, but they're gonna be able to find one kill as Fit Circus <laughs> chasing down Happy Dream. V support versus mid laner, who wins? It's actually the support as now they're pushing down to win the game. That's gonna be yeah. They take down the inhibitor. There's there's four members down. I don't think I don't think they can really stop this right now. Yeah, one turret goes down. There's the second. There's Akshan underneath the turret. There they're gonna pick up the come up as as okay. It actually, I think it actually turns into Akshan for a minute there and then starts shooting the gun. That's that's what looks like the animation is that is going to be Fitzark picking up the d picking up the Nexus, the most important 50 gold of the entire match. It's the game three Nexus being taken and Mythic Esport winning two to one. Yeah, just a really good series coming out from them. Overall, a good series from both of these teams, to be frank. They both played to or they both had very good games in their victories. They played to their win conditions and just in the end, Mythic were able to clean it up. Uh, Fitz are coming in off the bench. Game two had a decent game on that. Nami just didn't get a chance to shine. But this game on the Nautilus, like, I feel like half the issue was the fact that Nautilus had nine kills. But at the same time, you know, as a support main, yeah, sometimes you yeah. just want to take the kills for yourself. But yeah. really well played. And especially the Cavs, once again, on this misfortune, there's a reason why this champion is first picked so often. When it is piloted properly, it is absolutely devastating. Yeah, and it's not even that hard to pilot either. So, you know, given the right circumstances and the right team comps, and, and even these right team comps are not even that, like, hard to put together or even that bad even. Like, sometimes when we talk about, like, trying to build around a particular champion, we talk about, like, oh, sometimes you might need to take concessions and not make, maybe take the best champions. But here we have a Nautilus, we have a Shin Zhao, we have a Silas, like... This is just all good champions all the way down. And on top of that, you were, we're all built around this misfortune. Yeah, we're able to get ahead, snowball ahead. It looks real good. I think the main thing is just there are a lot of teamfight champions in the game, and a lot of them right now are just really good picks. As you said, Misfortune works well with something like a Malphite. Even the Nautilus works well. We saw Seraphine paired up with it. We can see, you know, Leona paired up, Rakan, Alistar. There's so many options for Misfortune, which I think is part of the reason why she's been a big part of this meta. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I feel like if you can't first pick it, you need to either have a very convincing answer to whatever the misfortune plus teamfight support is going to get paired up with or you just ban that misfortune away but you know maybe the style meta will shift a little bit because right now misfortune just everywhere uh, but shinkari that's gonna wrap us up yeah. for tonight yeah that does it for us here thank you all so much for tuning in from myself, the entire live broadcast crew, Rare Adam, my co-caster and producer for this evening. Thank you all so much for tuning in and we'll see you at the next match. Bye-bye.